excuse me father yes please uh, father may we begin with the program oh sure please start okay. thank you thank you so much father struggle today for a better tomorrow hard work pays you should always know no matter how tough may seem the climb keep moving keep fighting one win at a time perseverance and patience go a long way because for the sunrise even the longest nights make way a very good morning to everyone present over here i tanisha dalal on behalf of the st paul institute of professional studies in dot and the research foundation of india welcome you all to the international virtual conference on challenges opportunities and innovation for sustainable development and i feel pleased to take this opportunity to congratulate the st paul institute of professional studies in dot and the research foundation of india for the organization of this dynamic and thought provoking conference This conference has been organized by the St Paul Institute of Professional Studies in Dort in association with the Sir Foundation of India World Conference Forum sponsored by ARGA Edu Academy World Federation of Science and Technology WFSC California Before we proceed let's begin with a brief introduction about the St Paul Institute of Professional Studies in Dort The Catholic Diocese of Indore has a meritorious history for decades of imparting quality education at school level over the years there has been request from various quarters that the diocese to extend its services in the field of higher education as well the long cherished dream has now materialized in the form of st paul institute of professional studies in dot also known as steps since july 26 2010 steps is a self financed christian minority institute approved as such by the department of higher education mp and is affiliated to devi ahilya vishwavidyalaya indore and is a day college where admissions are open to both boys and girls the medium of instruction here is english presently it offers undergraduate and postgraduate courses along with academic excellence steps wishes to uphold and impart spiritual values to its students the integral development of personality of the students is the prime objective of the institute which it hopes to achieve through effective teaching and various co-curricular as well as extracurricular activities steps in such promoting national integration by bringing together students belonging to different linguistic religious and ethical backgrounds steps attaches great value to nurturing the potentialities of the students and to enhance the employability this conference has been organized in association with the research foundation of india the research foundation of india is strictly working for the social upliftment and higher education quality and indian research promotion in the form of events like international and national conferences seminars workshops symposiums and other activities rfi works for the integration of intellectual ideas across the globe to fulfill the thirst of innovation of humanity rfi is concerned with improving the educational process by encouraging scholarly inquiry related to education and practical application of research results research foundation of india is working for research and development for higher education it has signed mou with top universities from india rfi members are faculty researchers graduate students and other distinguished professionals with rich and diverse expertise in educational research rfi does not take any financial sponsors from any government body rfi has organized 1000 plus international conferences and workshops fpts symposiums etc all over the world now rfi having 87 chapters in india and 18 chapters in asian and other countries and categorized in five boards west east south north and central zone for central india we have dr saurabh jain chairman and ceo professor dr ashok kumar gupta chief managing director dr rishu jain president dr priyadarshini agnihotri north south board president dr rajesh sharma national convener dr ajay jain national coordinator dr manish dubey president central india board sri amit chand new delhi north board india president dr devdas indoria 
North Board India President, Professor Abhinesh Karosia, West Board India President, Dr. Sanjay Prasad, MP State President, Dr. Parul Sarda, MP State Convener, Dr. Indira Dixit, MP State Coordinator, Officers of CID, Dr. Sangeeta Baruka, Vice President CID, Dr. Subroto De, Joint Secretary CID, Dr. Prakashini Tewari, President World Virtual Conference Forum, Dr. Priyanka Chavla, Vice President, World Virtual Conference Forum, Dr. Seema Agrawal, Joint Secretary, R&I, Madhya Pradesh State, Dr. Ankita Jain, Indoor Zone Coordinator, Research and Innovation, Dr. Gunjan Shukla, Indoor Zone Coordinator, Student Wing, Dr. Kuldeep Agnihotri, Indoor Zone President, Dr. P.U. Soni, President, Bhopal Zone, Prof. Sakshi Bharatwar, Bhopal Chapter President, Research and Innovation Wing, Dr. Vishal Purohe, Chapter Head, Ujjain, Ms. Divya Dutta, President, Gwalior Zone, Research and Innovation Wing, Prof. Nikita Sharma, Vice President, Research and Innovation, Indore City, Dr. Shreshtha Chabra, Chapter Head, Indore, Convener, Indore Zone, Dr. Gaurav Malotra, Central India Board, Office in Charge, Ms. Priyanshi Dubey, all, for all boards, all chapters, all offices, Madhya Pradesh RFI, Technical Head and Program Assistant, Mr. Yograj Panchal, for all boards, all chapters, and all officers. I welcome you all once again to the International Virtual Conference. We pray for a heart free of sadness, a mind free of unease, a life full of gladness, a body free of illness, and a day full of God's blessings. So, to begin this day on a pious note, I invite Professor Mati Tarani for a prayer. Ma'am, please. <coughs> I invite Marty Man for a prayer. Man, please. I believe Ma'am is having some network issues. So once again, prayer is a message from Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Marty Man. Thank you, Tanisha, ma'am. Now I would request everyone to please join your hands and close your eyes and be ready for the prayer. Dear God of love, we are meeting today regarding the extraordinary matters of St. Paul Institute of Professional Studies Indore and Research Foundation of India. The matters which will ultimately be useful to all our faculty members, staff and students who have entrusted SPIPs and RFI to engage them intellectually, morally and spiritually. Be with us in our discussions. Give us insight and courage to do your will with compassion and reverence and as stewards and companions for the benefit of the entire campus community and beyond. Help us to know and believe in the gifts you have given us as trustees, both individually and collectively. Inspire us to solve the challenges we may face and to take joy in our shared triumphs, both mundane and grand. In faith and hope, we trust in your presence and guidance today. Amen. Thank you, Tanisha Ma'am. Thank you so much, Ma'am, for your pious prayer. Today, we have among us a woman, a very strong woman, which the world requires. She is a woman who lifts up and builds others, who loves and is loved. She is a woman who lives bravely, both tender and fierce. She is a woman of indomitable will. So I take this opportunity to invite the gentle, humble, compassionate, and tactful Dr. Sister Alice Thomas, Principal of St. Paul Institute of Professional Studies in Law, for the welcome address. Sister, please. Thank you, Tanisha, ma'am. A blessed day to one and all present in the International Virtual Conference. My heart is filled with joy and I gratify the holy name of Almighty God for bestowing his grace for organizing this event. Sustainable development is the need of our, and thus with a motive of throwing light on this aspect, we are organizing this conference, which is titled challenges, opportunities, and innovation for sustainable future. 
very delightfully i welcome the dignitaries gracing this session with immense gratitude i respectfully welcome the reverend father simon raj director st paul institute of professional studies in do his presence surely is a great source of encouragement for us with a jovial heart i welcome the international guest speakers mr von eric tandok professional international speaker educator canada dr noor aini education department at universitas negeri maksa indonesia mr chekku dupa transport um, engineering timbu bhutan as mr chinna promise kingi dinesh's ajuru university of education primolmani port harcourt river state nigeria we are all with your gracious presence of luminaries with us a heartfelt welcome to national guest speakers dr sami luta professor institute of engineering and management india and ms masuda yasmi managing director reliable educational trust india your presence is a source of inspiration for all i take this opportunity a present opportunity to gratefully welcome the dedicated team of research foundation of india especially dr saurabh kumar jain chairman and ceo professor dr ashok gupta chief managing director dr ajay jain national coordinator dr manish dubey president central india board and dr sanjay prasad state president madhya pradesh i acknowledge the efforts of dr devi vyas convener research and journal committee st paul institute of professional studies for organizing this event with immense appreciation and joyous gesture i welcome member participants from different colleges faculty members and student of spirits and everyone present virtually welcoming you all once again from the bottom of my heart i conclude thank you god bless you all thank you so much sister for your welcoming and hospitable words the honorable director of spirits reverend father simon raj does not believe in waiting for the perfect moment he is a person with resolute which makes each moment perfect he has spent life in the life of the people who are associated with him and he never ceases to inspire people so i feel immense pleasure in inviting a honorable and beloved director reverend father simon raj to deliver the director's address father please thank you dinesh madam a very hearty good morning and welcome to all the guests speakers participants from india and abroad in the in, in this international virtual conference on challenges opportunities and innovation for sustainable future my dear friends in a very simple way i would like to speak something to you all as a matter of fact all of us want a healthy safe and clean environment now challenge is how to provide quality food good health service clean atmosphere and best education facilities and good job opportunity to the billions of people there is no doubt lot of efforts are made a huh? lot of enormous of efforts are made but you all know and you should agree with me that results is not satisfactory result is not satisfactory so this morning when i was thinking 
instead of talking to the globally i was talking within myself as an individual na as an individual what sacrifice i have made for the sustainable development of the future that should be point for everyone you see we must reflect how does it challenges me as individual as an institution head or as a society member or as globally that i am contributing for the sustainable future mahatma gandhi very well said huh? very well he said the earth provides everything to satisfy every man's need but not any man's greed you see when we reflect on this topic we must meditate and fully agree huh? i would say again repeat that we should fully agree and realize that because of our greed our comfortable life we have really destroyed our sustainable future you see one very good concept i like to talk to you all this morning i was reading one book and there one word came killing joys you know killing joys what is this concept killing joys today everybody wants to have a comfortable life at any cost huh? any cost he is least bother what harm he will do to the society or oneself but still he wants to have that because of his comfort or her comfort now killing joys means you think for the sustainable development sustainable future for example if you are wasting water you must think that in near future there is not there will not be any drinking water for my generation my future generation so killing joys in the sense i enjoy taking good bath or very nice or lavishly spending everything but i kill that why i kill that joys i want that joy but i want save that joy because of the future so that is very important that how do you understand this concept are you ready for that are you really sacrificing that or are you understand this concept that yes i am ready to kill my joys for the future generation now in this regard when i was thinking i just reflected few things i would like to speak to you all one and foremost thing i would say that if we want to go for the sustainable future we need to be consistent consistent in the ness, in the sense that our proceeding should be very very systematic it is not just paper presentation huh? it is not just paper presentation or expert advice or we write in the book on paper and feel it it's okay going on well no our papers our expert view should be functional we must implement into our own individuals into our own society into our own global situations then only we can do for that we need to have strict rules and regulations very strict if you want to protect you want to really think for the sustainable future for example like indore is known for clean city huh? clean city you know the efforts are taken you know very well those who come the team expert teams come and visit they say lot of trials tribulation difficulties they are undergone and there were plenty of penalties and fines were imposed on the people now what is the result the result is that now system is developed system is very well developed a culture it has come into our culture that we must be clean we must do these things otherwise we will be fined and then individual responsibility is being taken i think this is very good concept a very good concept you want to sustain our future we need to come into a system we need to develop a culture we need to be individually responsible definitely then only we can do something concrete now plenty of opportunities are there huh? plenty of opportunities are there because our topic is that challenges and the opportunities we have plenty of opportunities to sustain our future what is the opportunities we see lot of waste lot of waste and i'm sure many many experts many many people are trying the best out of waste i am so happy to see that one we never thought in that line and now 
as we are growing, we are thinking that, yes, we can do a lot. We have great human resource. We have great experts. We are scientists. We have very interior decoration people. Who are there are so many people. So such opportunities are there. We need to enhance. We need to promote. And when we promote, we appreciate and we contribute, be responsible, then definitely varieties of things can come into our life and such opportunities can be enhanced very well. Now, when innovation, we talk about the innovation for the sustainable future. I have visited Germany. I would like to speak to you all. The new and improved technologies which is coming, they adapt. And which family I stayed, I realized that they are so much keen about the solar energy. Now, we are also accustomed with the solar energy. We are very happy that in India, we have an airport, an Ernakulam airport, fully run by the solar energy. Very good, great innovations, and many, many technologies which we have to approach, appreciate. Not only appreciate, what I have seen them, I realize in that I want to talk to you all, and I want to share my experience with you. That family is sustained with that solar energy. How? They really uh, take the power, save the power, and the government comes and take that power and give them remuneration. So such promotions are there. If such promotions are there, such innovative ideas are there, people get money, people get their sustainability. I'm sure everybody will be more responsible and they will do very well. So as an institution head, as a person in the academic academician, as a person who is uh, able to guide people, we all are responsible people. So our duty is there to we must train and educate our students to be ready to take up the challenges and think in a very innovative and creative way that they can really secure the future. And let us be convinced about this fact. These are the small details which I talked to you. Let us be convinced and work hard for the sustainable development so that we can really contribute very, very concretely for the future generation. This is what I like to share to you. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk to you all. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much, Father, for your edifying and enriching words. Now, it's time for the group photographs, so I request everyone to kindly turn on your cameras. And I request Dr. Ravi Bias, the convener of the Research and Journal Committee, to please take the photographs, sir, please. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, sir. Leaders don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. It is never about the role, always about the goal. Dr. Saurabh Kumar Sen, the chairman of RFI, is a person who faces any goal and challenge head on. Now I invite the gregarious and sociable Dr. Saurabh Kumar Sen to deliver the presidential address. Sir, please. Sarab, sir. Thank you, Professor Dalal. Thank you, sir. As we know very well, St. Paul Institute of Professional Studies in Gaur is going to organize such a wonderful international conference on challenges, opportunities, and innovation for sustainable future. For such type of uh, concerns is to be organized by SIPS. So I would like to say thanks to Sister Dr. Alice Thomas, Madam, Principal SPIPS in Gaur. Honorable Director, Father Simon Raj. Research Foundation of India, Chief Managing Director, Professor Dr. Ashok Kumar Gupta. Professors, lecturer, researchers, ladies and gentlemen. As we know very well, everyone has faced the related problem of COVID-19. Now we are trying to convert their mind from pandemic to academic. SPIPS is trying to be work for sustainable development goal. That is the nice perspective for uh, the goal four for quality education. For this purpose, I would like to welcome interesting guest, Von Eric Tanduk, Dr. Noor Ali, Mr. Cheku Gupka, Mr. Chinna Promise Chinwe, today national guest and speaker, Dr. Swami Dutta, Ms. Mashuda Yami, both of thanks, 
by Dr. Ravi Bias, Dr. Meghna Rekwal, Dr. Ankita Jain, Dr. Gunjan Sukla, Dr. Vivek Kosik. Also, I would like to congratulate to make that function success to our participants. Also, I would like to welcome all chapter, chapter head, Research Foundation of India, National Coordinator, Professor Dr. Ashok Kumar Gupta, Professor Dr. Piyadasini Agni Hotri, Dr. Manish Dubey, Dr. Sanjay Prasad, and all board member of RFI. So thank you very much. Thank you over to you, Dr. Dalal, please. Thank you so much, Saurabh, sir, for your courteous and chivalrous words. Now, I take this opportunity to invite a person who is a leader and a visionary. He converts our mistakes into lessons, pressure into productivity, and skills into strength. He really knows how to bring out the best in people. He is the kind-hearted, erudite, and scholarly Professor Dr. Ashok Kumar Gupta, the Chief Managing Director of RFI. So now I request Professor Dr. Ashok Kumar Gupta to bless us with his kind words. Sir, please. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Professor Dr. Ashok Kumar Gupta, CMD RFI from Delhi NCR. I feel dignified to be invited to this inaugural session of International Conference on Challenges, Opportunities, and Innovation for a Sustainable Future. As we know, this is organized by St. Paul Institute of Professional Studies in Law and uh, Research Foundation of India along with RFI Care. This international conference is in association with World Virtual Conference Forum, World Federation of Science and Technology, International Research Guide Federation, Academic Research Guide Association, IDU Academy, INC. The aim of this international conference is to provide the most complete and reliable source of information on the recent advancements in the field of challenges, opportunity, and innovation for a sustainable future. This uh, international webinar covers a broad range of topics in this field. The National Education Policy 2020, that is NEP 2020, has given a clarion call for holistic value-based education to prepare our youth and develop our nation. Because education is fundamental for achieving full human potential, developing an equitable and just society, and promoting a national development. It is my privilege and honor to welcome all the dignitaries, resource persons, and experts available for this international conference. My sincere thanks to our beloved Dr. Saurabh Jain, Chairman and CEO, Research Foundation of India. A special thanks to Dr. Ajay Jain and Team RFI for managing this wonderful session. I would also like to thank the support of organizing and participating institute, all the participants who are attending the session with full enthusiasm and those who have given their input to this webinar. For more detail, you may please contact info.com and you can visit for such other webinars our official website www.researchfoundationofindia.com. Again, thanks to all for your support and dedication. Thanks a lot once again. Thank you. Over to me. Thank you so much, sir, for your stimulating and enterprising words. Our first guest is an educator who educates with his heart, not with his mind. He is Mr. Von Eric Tandorf, and he is a professional, inspirational speaker, educator, moderator, and facilitator from Canada. Now I call upon Dr. Meghna Riker to introduce Mr. Von Eric. Ma'am, please. Uh, thank you, Tanisha, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. On behalf of SPIPS and RFI, I, Dr. Meghna Raikar, really feel honored and welcome our today's guest and Amazon best-selling author, Vaughn Eric Tandit. He is a member and coach of public speaking and confidence building. He is a distinguished Toastmaker Master, DTM, that is in Toastmasters International. He is a licensed teacher and had a background in customer service and marketing in Philippines before moving to Canada in 2008. He now speaks globally in different platforms, organizations, and schools to share his mission and vision. 
Sir Von Eric, we would also love to hear about your mission and vision. Therefore, I request you to please enlighten us through your experience and diploma achievements. Sir, please. Thank you, Dr. Migana Raikar. Can you Thank hear you. me? Yes. So uh, please for over some to reason, you. yeah, for some reason, uh, I have a little problem on camera, but what is important is I'm audible and I can share my presentation with you. But first, I would like to say thank you to St. Uh, Paul Institute of Professional Studies in, uh, Research Foundation of India and RFI Care. Thank you very much. To the different dignitaries and guests of honors and speakers, thank you and congratulations to everyone. I'm now going to share my presentation. All right. Can you can you see my slides, everyone, doctor? Yes, yes sir. It is working. All right. All right. Okay. I would like to say thank you to for Dr. Jain for inviting me here, and you mentioned that I can give any topic, and I choose the art of giving and receiving feedback. Why did I choose the art of giving and receiving feedback? To be able to take challenges, opportunities, and innovation for a sustainable future, we need to know the art of giving and receiving feedback. Before we start, I would like to have these objectives. At the end of this presentation, you will get to know more why feedback is important in your workplace, career, and life. And the second objective, three important steps to learn from feedback. Now, if I'm going to ask everyone here what is feedback, I might give different definition. For the purpose of this presentation, I would like to share this definition of feedback. Feedback is any information about reaction to a product, a person, performance of a task, which is used as a basis for improvement. I would like to inform everyone, remember the use of feedback as a basis for improvement and not to criticize someone. There you go. When we say feedback, it is view, critics, judgment, satisfaction, opinion, anything now according to henry cloud the natural response to evaluation is to feel judged we have to mature to a place where we respond to it with gratitude and love feedback since we are in a conference and we are all speaking and i will use the example of a speaker in this topic now, as a speaker, you are getting feedback in three things. How you look, how you sound, and how you organize your material. How you look. Why you should dress well. Let's say when you go to conference, to your class, to your workplace, to your meeting. Your appearance is the first basis for evaluation other people have in first impression last. I know and I'm sure you all know this one. Number two, it makes you feel important. Number three, your appearance talk to you and to others. Make certain it says, here's a person who has a self-respect. He's important, treat him that way. And probably the, the most important is you never know who you might run into when you go out. It could be a future business partner or a person of interest. But to dress well, it makes you more confident, particularly if you are speaking. In my case right now, you can't see me, but I need to do this one thing. How I sound. How do you sound as a speaker? Are you confident? Are you nervous? Are you loud? Are you low voice? Do you know that if you have a low voice, that means you are not confident. Lastly, this is the most important when you do your speech. 
how you organize your material. You don't want to talking of the same thing over and over again, repeating what you're saying. People will going to judge you on how you speak in these readings, how you look, how you sound, and how you organize your material. Now, what is meant by constructive feedback and negative feedback? For the purpose of this presentation, and we are all here at dignitaries, important person, you want to be positive, let's use the word constructive feedback instead of negative. But the most important in giving feedback uh, hello? is not what they say, uh, it's how you say Eric, it. Sir? Yes? Hello, sir. May I have your attention, sir? Uh, it's just a request from our side. Your screen is not, uh, actually your uh, presentation is not working. We are able to uh, like watch your, uh, what I oh. can say, home page is there, but your PPT is not there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you for letting me know. How about now that? It is. Yes, now it is there. Okay. Thank you. So, as I mentioned earlier, as a speaker, you are being judged into three things. How you look, how you sound, and how you organize your material. You need to dress well. How you, How's your voice? Is it confident or nervous? And of course, the most important is how you organize your material. Now, for the purpose of this presentation, when you give feedback, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. How to give feedback. This is our first part of our presentation and I know we are, I, every speaker has 20 to 25 minutes to present. How to give feedback. Number one is your attention. Number two, use the sandwich method. And number three, show you care. Let's go to the art of attention first before explaining the feedback. Sorry. When you give feedback, you need to listen attentively, actively. That's the number one step to give a feedback to anyone. Okay. Now, have you heard about the feedback sandwich? Please type yes or no or let me know. If you don't have hear yet about the feedback sandwich, just say no so that I know. So feedback sandwich is one way to give evaluation using the format of a burger. So imagine a burger, top portion, middle portion, and the lower portion. The top portion indicates positive feedback, constructive feedback, the middle, and the lower is a positive feedback again. What is feedback sandwich? Again. It's a positive, start with a positive when you give a feedback. This is actually used in workplace when we give feedback to our employees. We can also use this in school when we give feedback to our students or co-teachers. And again, this is it, something positive to warm up the discussion. This is one way to start your feedback and then the feedback you actually wanted to give and something else is positive to set on the real field feedback. I'm going to give an example. Let's say Crystal. I'll use the name of Crystal. Crystal, something positive to warm up discussion. I like how you started the conference today. You are very clear. And then I'll transition to my feedback, the feedback I actually wanted to give to Crystal, something that I want her to improve. And then later on, I'll transition to another feedback. And I will say, overall, Crystal, great job on hosting the conference. That is one way how to give feedback. But I have to remind everyone here, not all people want to receive feedback, particularly if it's not constructive or it's not positive. It's a human nature. You don't want to be judged. That's why many people are afraid of public speaking, most probably because they don't want to get negative feedback. Do you agree with me with that? Probably. Now, another feedback aside from that sandwich method is my own version of care. C-A-R-E. What is that? Compliment, you address, you resolve, and you encourage. So give compliment. And then address something that you want to improve for that particular, let's say, presentation. 
and then resolve and encourage the speaker or probably in your workplace, encourage your employees. Or in the classroom, you encourage your students. I would like to emphasize, be a coach, not a critic. Okay, again, the purpose of evaluations or feedback is for the basis of improvement and not to criticize somebody else. If you really want to go into innovation opportunities, you need to be a coach and not a critic. Now, that are the three steps in giving feedback, which is your attention, the sandwich feedback, and the care format. Now, how to receive feedback? Now, this is the difficult part for everyone here. We don't want to receive negative feedback. I assure you that. All people want only positive compliment. We want to hear, oh, you're great. Oh, you did well. Oh, you speak very good. Oh, you have a very good idea. But to be honest, we don't want to receive feedback like, oh, your voice is too low. Oh, your idea is not really good. That's the reason why I choose this topic because I want everyone how to receive feedback. You have to take into consideration different people will give you different feedback. Right now, I know most of you listening to me, I'm getting feedback. But if you want to win, you need to accept feedback, good or bad, negative or positive. Moving on, evaluations. You will get evaluations from your audience right now. As I mentioned, you are my audience right now. And to the other speakers, we are your audience and you are actually getting evaluation. They may not tell you, but again, there's always evaluation or feedback of what you do. Anything what you do, not just only in speaking, in your work, in your teaching, in your presentation, anything, even at home. Right? Now, to help you get a good evaluation or feedback, you need a mentor or you need a coach. Again, I would like to remind everyone here, three things that they will give feedback to you as a speaker is how you look, how you sound, and how you organize your material. Next one, how, you, how to receive feedback is set yourself up for success. Okay, you need to prepare. Prepare yourself for practice. Practice, 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 and that will produce progress. Okay, practicing your speech for an effective presentation. And then eventually, once you practice your speech, you are now ready to present your talk to your audience. That is setting yourself up for success. Now, in most conferences that I attended, some conferences will give a speaker five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or 20 minutes. And the speakers always complain Oh, five minutes is not enough for me. Oh, 10 minutes is not for me. I have many things to tell. I got many slides to show to you. The point here is it's not how long you speak, but what is really your message to your audience? If they give you five minutes to speak, do it for five minutes, not over time, because we need to respect the time of others too. And of course, respect the organizers and the moderator or the MC or the master of ceremony. Now, if you really know your speech and you go over time for the given period of time, that means you did not practice your speech. That's the real truth. To be honest. Right now, I know I have 20 minutes presentation and I'm at 12 minutes, 38 seconds right now. How do I know that? It's because I know and I time myself. Now, how to receive feedback? You need to learn from the feedback. 
if feedback hurts you, then you are not willing to win. Because if you want to win, you have to be willing to be judged by others. Feedback is the breakfast of champion. Always remember that. Anywhere, in your workplace, in your school, in your classroom, even from your own family and friends. If you want to win, you have to accept feedback with open arms and open mind. Don't get hurt. Now, how to learn from the feedback? Be coachable, be teachable, and apply what you learn from that feedback. Right? That is learning from the feedback. This is the most important. If you receive negative or constructive feedback, I would like to share this very important acronym. Q-tip, Q-tip, Q-tip. It stands for quit taking it personally. Don't take personally the negative feedback that you will get. Be thankful and grateful that they give you feedback rather than they keep quiet. In my more than 20 years of experience as a manager in a fast food industry, if a customer is not impressed with your service and they keep quiet, that's dangerous to your business. Always remember that. And as a teacher, if your student is not impressed with you and he or she's quiet, that's dangerous too. I'd rather take a constructive feedback for my own improvement than to receive a silent treatment. So again, quit taking it personally. Now, I have one chapter of feedback or evaluation in my book. That is the Say It Loud, Say it Proud, but I will not going to tackle what is that book all about. I, it, I have a one chapter of evaluation because I always believe that feedback is very important. If we want to win, if we want to pursue greater goals, if we want to achieve our dreams, we need to take feedback. Now, in this theme of conference of opportunities, challenges, and innovations, I would like to challenge everyone, take feedback, take evaluations, no matter how bad or good it is. If it is good, take it and say thank you. And if it's not really good, don't get hurt. Remove the letter E in the ego. Let go of your ego and let's go towards a greater part as an individual wherein we can grow and learn from kind of any feedback. Again, thank you very much for inviting me here. What a great opportunity to be here with you. And if you have any questions, let me know. Email me at confidentlyspeakinginstitute at gmail.com. I'm in Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm also on Instagram. Do you have any question? Over to you, Madam Moderator. Thank yes. you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your brilliant sharing related to how we get feedback, its types, and evaluation. And this way, you educate uh, our team and our uh, invited guests. And thank you so much once again, sir for your brilliant sharing friends education is universal and knowledge knows no boundaries it empower people to decide their horizons capture new opportunities and exercise greater degrees of cultural and educational exchange with this great reference i would like to welcome our guest for today's virtual conference dr noor annie Assistant Professor of English Education Department of Universitas, Nigeri, Makassar, Indonesia. She earned doctoral degree on English education program from the Pesakar Universitas, Nigeri, Makassar, Indonesia. 
She attended some international conferences as the presenter. She is a member of TEF Alliance, that is Teflin, and ASIA TEFL. She has got several awards, namely the best presenter at PKPT Research Report hosted by Higher Education of Indonesia in the year 2018. And the Global Educator of Decade Award given by Leadership in Education Academy Development in Philippines in 2020. She was an international ambassador of peace given by World Literary Forum for Peace and Human Rights in the year 2021. Her research interests are teaching English as foreign language, teaching English oral communication apprehensions and ELT. She is in the board team of Indonesian Education Chair to Care Volunteers. Man's achievements are really, really very commendable, and we all are so fortunate to have you with us, ma'am. And looking forward to have your guidance, ma'am. We welcome you once again for this session and uh, request you to address the gathering with your illuminating thoughts, ma'am. Please, okay. Um, thank you, moderator. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. All right, is it visible, my slide? Yes, absolutely visible. All right, thank you very much, madam. Yes. Okay, um, thank God. Um, it's such an honor for me to be a part of this great international conference on talents, opportunities, and innovation for a sustainable future. Um, I thank you so much to the committee um thank you very much to dr mutmaina for involving me here to be a part of this great um international conference well i'm dr Mutmaini. i'm from indonesia good afternoon everyone so actually here in the afternoon okay um let me start my topic is about emerging new trends in teaching generation c so um, if before presenter is talking about the feedback, right? The feedback uh, about the great presentation. Thank you so much for the really great topic before. So today I'm talking about um, new trends in education, especially. All right. Um, I'm an assistant professor in a universitas or state university of Makassar, Indonesia, and I'm currently teaching the university students and they are from several parts in Indonesia. And now I would like to show you there are four things that um, the main materials for this presentation. Well, uh, why I'm talking about the significance or the important why do we have to uh, emerge education, uh, emerge trends in education? Because in today's world, um, a country's socio-economic development is really primarily defined by its ability to generate new knowledge and apply it in a high-tech applicants. So education has become a new focus for boosting national economics, competitiveness in the face of expanding globalization. So um, the next thing that really crucial part why um, we should emerge um, education, uh, trends in education, the next one is about digitalization. So I do believe that we are in this um, great event uh, we are from uh, um, around the world, right, from another countries. Um, I do believe that digitalization will require specialized techniques in school management and will be a key component in increasing production and lower productivity. Um, the development of this education also affected by the development of technology. So the researchers, the scholars, they always develop and research 
about the new innovation that mine is human's life. So one thing that they want to achieve is they want to ease human life. So from the very basic thing like a digital algorithm that remind people to wake up until the very complex one like application that may answer the test where people only need to scan the question and to wait for the answer. So therefore, um, students are required to be the one who may do this kind of thing by their creativity and innovation. Um, it is also show that technology already being a good friend for every student, for everyone in this world uh, to spend their daily life. Okay, so from the spend their leisure time until their study time also influence and involve technology. So technology's um, application is numerous disciplines has proven to be extremely, extremely useful and advantageous for a teacher in achieving certain goals. So new trends in education for Gen Z or Generation Z. So what are the new trends that I mean here? Okay, so I try to cite what FIS 2011 stated that um, emerging in, um, trends or new trends in education is a really crucial part for um, every um, every lecturer or every teacher in this world. Why? Because the time flies so fast, the development of technology and information. So the first thing is learning can occur at any time and in any location. So we need to think that from now on, um, after the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we need to think that learning can occur at any time and in any location. Okay, so e-learning tools provide excellent sense for self pace and also remote learning. Um, so one of many approaches that I try to apply in my class as my personal experience is high flex classroom approach. It's a particular important since it's a low for allows the students to take part even they are not in a university, um, even they are in their house, they, they still can access the lesson. The second one is students have the ability to choose how they wish to study. And then more project-based learning will be introduced to the students. And um, project-based learning, it means um, the students eager to work collaboratively um, to, to solve the problem that given from the lecturer, the, the teacher, and then they will work together with their team. And then internship, mentorship, initiative, and collaborative projects. Then um, students will be exposed, exposed to data interpretation, which will demand them to apply their theoretical knowledge. And next is students will be assessed differently and the conventional platform to assess students may become irrelevant in or insufficient. So, um, online assessment or um, try to insert technology in uh, giving assessment for the students is really a new trend actually so we 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 can use many applications like um quizzes bamboozle or mentimeter or socrative or etc that try to assess the students um ability or the students understanding then um, students of you know, will be considered in designing and updating the curriculum. The last one uh, about the new trends is that students will become increasingly self-sufficient in their learning. So it requires the teacher to take a new role as a facilitator, okay, guiding the students through the learning process, not trying to be um, captain, not trying to be um, a dictator leader, but try to be a good facilitator, try to be a, a good partner for the students. Okay, um, for the next one is, how do we 
as a teacher um, try to ensure try to ensure that our teaching and learning process is really conducive for for our students so the things that we need to do is becoming the 21st century instructors or the teachers okay so we need to relearn and equip them with the digital tools to make the learning preference of the gen c students so we need to know what they want to what they want to do and what they wish to use in learning so um there are 10 skills that we need to uh, try to master actually the first one is complex problem solving critical thinking creativity um people management how do, uh, do we manage our students in the classroom uh, even in out of the classroom and then coordinating with others emotional intelligence that is really important try to manage and control our emotion uh, when we are in the classroom uh, in um in bahasa indonesia my teacher has taught me about bunglon yeah um try to be a great actor and actress in your classroom even you are having a bit problem actually out of uh, classroom but when you are entering your classroom you have to be always cheerful right okay then this number seven is judgment and decision making service orientation try to have a negotiation and also the cognitive flexibility um another strategies or techniques that we use is sharing session so the course or the subject that uh, the course that we conduct should utilize a flipped classroom or high flex classroom approach in which the students learn content individ uh, independently so uh, it can lead the students to study by themselves even they are not in the classroom okay um the content test and assessment of the course are hosted on the online learning platform which is social learning platform um as my personal experience i used to apply um some like a mentimeter um quizzes and also bamboozle to have um, a fun learning for the students and then there will be students feedback so after completing the course, a survey was administered. So the purpose of the survey was to get the students feedback. So like what uh, the previous speaker said that the feedback is really crucial uh, part. We need to know uh, our students' response actually when we are standing in front of the class, whether they understand or not, whether they like or not. Okay, so emerging trends emerging trends in uh, education it also uh try to apply tools or use tools for creative teaching so our creativity is one of the compre uh, comprehension that the teacher may have to be a professional teacher okay um the second one is a learning support for the sh uh, students i also utilize AI technology that students may use as their learning support. But the most popular one is Google. So Google itself have a bigger name, search engine. So we can search everything in this world from that Google. Okay. And um, that is we call it problem solving. So uh, AI is a one of the technology that really massively develop in an education so have a role as the media that may help the students to find the problem solving they see the way people solve the problem in the past and they try to ease the administration process so students this time the need to went to their teacher's house or office to ask for a signature they may uh, send us for the electronic um, signature so it, it is a fusion actually and 
the next one is about the best practices. Best practices is uh, the things that I have done in uh, my class, and uh, this is the several phenomenon and the several um, best practices that other lecturer in our university has done. Okay, so the technologies which can be used in education, we have record and edit audio clips. This is the several uh, um, platform or tools that we can use when we are trying to create an authentic, interactive, and engaging video content, creative visual engaging content. We have over here, uh, um, like um, use social networking, use social bookmarking, etc. Still create engaging presentation and also create non-traditional quizzes. Try to avoid the burden in our class. And okay. Um, the gamification in LT, this is a part of the best practices. Um, I'm trying to use gamification, that is a bamboozle quizzes and um, other platform or other application like uh, Secret Door um, in a classroom. Um, I'm teaching um, academic writing subject and also English for specific purposes for the last semester. So I'm try I tried to use this one. And the main team major. I'm sorry, this is the the this is my students actually. Okay, and the students response. The students engagement in high class um class by emerging trends. So actually this is a one of the research that I have conducted as well. So, try to uh, spread the survey. Um, so there were 85%, they strongly agree, or they agree that uh, the students showed engagement in the learning uh, process, okay? This implies that with a bamboozle quizzes, secret or application assisted gamification, students are more interested in studying. Um, then, um, Another student's response, we can see it from this slide. It describes the student's activities during learning and teaching process by using quizzes and bump result. It's a part of um, ICD actually as a trend, as a trend for teaching generation C learners. Okay, so, but before that, uh, before I try to, um, close my presentation i would like to emphasize that teacher will never be replaced by the technology but technology will support us as the teacher to change the world okay um that's all my presentation if you have any question or you want to uh have another um chit chat or anything else you can find me this is my instagram also of Facebook and also my email I can send later to you know chat box okay so thank you very much madam uh, moderator thank you that's the end of my presentation thank you good afternoon happiness is when what you think what you say and what you all do in harmony ma'am your presentation is really very coherent and fully aligned to the learning practices Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Thank you so much for this insightful and appealing sharing. Thank you. Once again, a big thank you, ma'am. And now I request Tanisha, ma'am, please. Thank you so oh, much, Nisha, ma And thank you, Noor, ma'am, for your eloquent and persuasive words. Our next guest puts the common good above all concerns and the needs of others above himself. He has a selfless outlook and is a great leader. He is Mr. Cheku Jatindukka, Transportation Engineer from Kimpu, Bhutan. So now I invite Dr. Ajay Patil to introduce Mr. Jatindukka, sir, please. Ajay, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Good afternoon, all. I feel pride to welcome Mr. Jackson Dukka from Kimpu, Bhutan. He holds a B civil engineering and a master's degree in transportation engineering. Though 
he is a civil engineer by profession but he is more a social worker he is also a writer poet musician and a beautiful human being to help others and serve humanity unconditionally and to ignite and bring global transformations for a better world by being the vehicle of hope for the weak and voice for the voiceless in the year 2017 he formed a new political party dgt and in 2019 he formed the global village whose mission was to create a better world i welcome you sir here in this international conference over to you madam tanisha thank you so much ajay sir for the well introduced well introduction and now i invite mr Ch jackson to come for his words sir please uh hello everyone uh, a very good good afternoon to every one of you so uh, i would like to extend my uh this year gratitude and thanks to research foundation of india and other organization uh, for inviting me to be part of today's very important uh, program and uh, uh, the topic is very much uh, close to my heart and what i do and that is something that is uh, very much uh, required in today's world uh, not just for the present generation but uh, for our future generation so let me start uh, by uh, sharing some uh, stories about bhutan uh, bhutan very small country uh, in asia uh, is the only carbon negative country in the world right now and i'm very happy to call myself good news and uh, bhutan a very long time back uh, already embarked on the uh, path of sustainable development and creating a sustainable future uh, we have something called the gross national happiness uh, uh, philosophy which very much uh, you know like uh, uh is built on values of sustainable development and the conservation of environment uh, the preservation of culture and all this equitable and sustainable uh, uh development is very much uh, at the core of this uh, philosophy so bhutan is already doing great and right now we have more than 70% of the land cover is forest cover so that's about bhutan and uh pertinent to are uh, related to today's topic let me also you know briefly share my thoughts uh on the challenges innovation and sustainable future so i don't have a uh, i didn't really have a time to prepare a powerpoint presentation i've been very busy for the last few days and indeed uh, even before this program i was uh, writing some uh, you know like a project summary or creating a new social media so this is Uh, what i've been doing in the last two hours so i didn't even have time to prepare for today's topic anyhow yes this is something you know this topic is something which is related to the work that i do so uh, let me talk first about the challenges that we are facing right now and uh, of course uh, this uh, the good news is that so many people are trying to do something and they have become uh, becoming conscious uh, citizens global citizens but of course it's not enough so the most important thing uh, is that uh, now it is time for us to unite and come together okay so although uh, so many uh, uh, thousands of organization and millions of people are trying to do something for this world uh, but uh, we are not uh, united in terms of our vision and our purpose and our action plans uh, to create this better world so uh, this is very important that now we should come together okay so that's why i am in the process of uh, building this global network and i have also come up with a, 
a collaborative uh, platform called Better Wall Alliance. Under this platform, any individual or organization trying to do something uh, better for the world, okay? Uh, so they can join this organization. And now we should also, uh, 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 we should understand that uh, the government of the day in any country is not enough uh, to address all the problems of the world, okay? I mean, all the social problem of the world. So I am putting forward this concept called by the people, for the people, okay? So we must take, as a global conscious citizen, take the lead role to address all these problems. And the very idea of coming together to be one and standing and creating a bigger force to tackle all these uh, global problems is very, very important. And uh, very important thing, I would also like to share the work that I'm doing. And uh, a few years back, I really wanted to do something for this world because I saw that there are so many problems that we are facing. So I came up with this uh, idea of uh, uh, this non-profit organization called Global Village Connection, whose primary idea and mission is to create a better world. So we are in the process of uniting the people. We are in the process of uh, creating different kinds of network to address uh, different uh, themes. And uh, <clears throat> I have also set 12 thematic projects and also come up with few, uh, you know, like uh, mega projects that would address, you know, uh, our present problems. Number one is that uh, we need to address food security for which I'm in the process of coming up with this uh, uh, zero hunger proposal. We don't want to wait until 2030 as per the UN agenda. So we would like to create a wall of zero hunger by another five years. So maybe by 2027, uh, we should have you know enough food for everyone in this world. And number two is uh, we need to also address this uh, climate change. This is the biggest and the most important common enemy of the people of the world. So I am actually, uh, uh, GVC is in particular, uh, forming this uh, Climate and Sustainability Club. We are building this network all over the world. So I hope and request uh, everyone to join this movement as well. So we would like to address this uh, climate change uh, on a very urgent basis. And uh, number three is, uh, uh, I feel that 50% uh, uh, of the problems that we create is about this waste management. And so, so I have also to clean and safe world, okay? So I come up with uh, something called this uh, smart and safe waste management system. And I look forward to implement this in all countries in the world in the next few years. And of course, the most important thing is that uh, there are enough uh, uh, resources, knowledge, but we are not utilizing it properly, okay? So uh, we, have, we would like to come up with something called uh, GVC <clears throat> a research and uh, training platform so that we can offer our, uh, free trainings to the people of the world. And uh, of course, uh, our idea is to reach all this knowledge and information uh, to the people at the grassroots level. So these four are uh, the most important projects that uh, we would like to initiate very soon. And there are so many other thousands of programs that we would like to come in the near future. And uh, today, uh, uh, in today's uh, event, I, I would also like to share about a new concept uh, uh, that I have come uh, come up with. Of course, uh, this uh, I believe is something uh, very, very maybe new to many people. So this is uh, actually not to create a better world. Okay, of course we need to do create a uh, new world where you know, like we don't uh, have uh, so much of today's pro uh, uh, problems. So this initiative I call it the Better World Initiative. Okay, so uh, under this. The most important concept is uh, that, as I said before, now we need to, we the people need to come forward. We need to unite ourselves, okay? So I'm putting this uh, concept called by the people for the people. It's only us, if we come forward and work together, we can, of course, solve all the problems of the world. And of course, uh, we need to build that global structure 
to address all the problems uh, of the world. So that's why we really need to form some kind of a global structure, which I would call it the uh, Global Art Management Committee, okay? And this is going to have the structure spread over all countries and all the international, regional, country, and sub-country levels, okay? And of course, uh, uh, the most important uh, like uh, thing or challenge uh, that we, the people of the world are facing is that we don't have uh, enough resources. We don't have just uh, funds uh, to take on these problems. And I've seen that in many African countries, so many young people, they would like to do something for the world. But unfortunately, you know, there are, there's shortage of funds. And even the funds so that are channeled to the UN and so many other international funding organizations, and most of these are, are spent uh, as part of the administrative cost and whatever uh, is required on the ground. A very little of these funds are, you know, like uh, uh, reach uh, on the ground. So uh, we definitely need to, uh, you know, like increase this kind of sustainable and enough fund for the people of the world. And also, uh, the most, uh, the governments uh, and the people all around the world, we must uh, shift our focus. And right now, uh, all of you know that uh, we are having in the 21st century a war in Ukraine, okay? And because of this war, and the global uh, economy is disrupted and many countries are uh, having uh, problems. And in Bhutan, a small country, we are, you know, like uh, having a fuel price hike, and this has really affected uh, the people. So I think now it's time for the people of the world to our unity to fight for a peaceful world, okay? So we need to urge our governments to, you know, like uh, uh, focus more on, you know, like uh, 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 building the systems to, you know, like uh, render the welfare for the people of the world. and. We need to fight for demilitarization, okay? And we would like to, uh, together, fight uh, with the governments, okay? Uh, to, you know, like, uh, spend less on military and spend more on uh, the welfare of the people of the world. So this is, of course, you know, what I have to share. And once again, thank you so much for having me into this very, very important topic. And my special thanks to the organizers for bringing this very important uh, topic today, which is very much uh, relevant to uh, today's world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your expressive and articulate address. Do we have Mr. Sinna Thomas to live with us? Mr. Sinna Thomas to live. So, Dr. Somi Dutta is an old soul with young eyes, a vintage heart, and a beautiful mind. She is a professor in the Institute of Engineering and Management, and she is our next speaker. So now I invite Dr. Dipali Gupta to introduce Dr. Tomi Dutta. Ma'am, please. Thank you, Tanisha, ma'am. It is my privilege to welcome and introduce Dr. Dutta. Dr. Somi Dutta is an associate professor at Institute of Engineering and Management, Kolkata, India. She has completed her PhD in Computer Science and Technology at IIEST Shivpur. She secured first position and received gold medal for her BTEC IT and MTech CSE from Polana Abul Kalam Azad University of Technology. She is certified as Publix Academy Peer Reviewer 2020 and certified Microsoft Innovative Educator 2020. Her research interests are data mining, information retrieval, online social media analysis, and image processing. She has published 30 conference and journal paper in Springer, IEEE, IGI Global, Teller and Francis, and many more. She is the member of several technical functional bodies such as ACM, IEEE, IFERP, ICSE, ASR, and so far. She has published five patents and copyright. Dr. Somi Datta has delivered 30 keynote talks in different international conferences. She has been awarded with Rashtriya Shiksha Ratna Award Research Education Excellence Award, International Teacher Award 2021 by Ministry of MSME, Government of India. We warmly greet you, ma'am. We are eager to hear from you. 
Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Dipali Gupta, ma'am. I just want to share my screen. Is my screen visible to you all? Yes, ma'am. A very good afternoon. Thank you all of you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Ajay uh, Jain for inviting me in the conference. Mm -hmm. And I just welcome you all and I just greet you all for the great success of the International Conference on Challenges, Opportunities and Innovation for Sustainable Future. And a very good luck for the Research Foundation of India for your greatest goal. And uh, also my heartful thanks for St. Paul Institute of uh, Professional Studies and though for arranging such conferences in this uh, online platform. So today the topic of my discussion is predictive analysis, evolutionary computing and genetic algorithm. So I'm just, uh, uh, just keeping the introduction part because ma'am has already given my introduction. I'm just skipping this part. Directly, I'm going to the uh, topic. So today, I'm going to discuss a, such a few things about the evolutionary computing. This is quite a, not a new topic. Uh, already, we all are quite accustomed with this topic. So it is a subfield of artificial intelligence in AI, which is used excessively in complex optimization problems for continuous uh, iterations. And uh, as we are working with uh, sustainable technologies, so definitely uh, we are quite interested to work with few of the bio-inspired algorithms, by genetic algorithm, different sort of evolutionary computing, genetic computing, these are quite correlated. And uh, apart from this different sort of intelligence optimization algorithms are there also like parts uh, and colony optimization particle swarm optimization these are bio inspired algorithms so definitely this is quite an older concept what we have seen in our life from where we try to learn and in the previous uh, lectures we have also uh, give this sort of knowledge that how the feedback is correlated uh, professor just highlighted and uh, directors are also is highlighting that we are enjoying our joy and we are keeping some unreliable or some probabilistic uh, thing for our uh, next generation if we are getting all the joys instead of saving so definitely the next generation will not be the better win so already we, we need to focus on this areas that how to do the better uh, optimization and what we can leave for our future generation so definitely one generation after generation as we work out with different sort of softwares and everything but we have seen we are coming from different sort of versions similarly in this uh, different sort of real life problems also we should involve different sort of optimization algorithm like genetic algorithms or evolutionary algorithm which will help us to progress ourselves and to find different sort of better outcome so this is one of uh, our work what we have done with my research collaboration team that i want to discuss here that how using different sort of genetic algorithms we can work with uh, clustering problems and uh, as we know that social media is one of the various popular medium of data where from where we can grab different sort of data so definitely using that data we can really work on different sort of area and we can get different sort of feedbacks we can do different sort of cluster analysis and all so this is the objective and motivation for this work to organize uh, in uh, different sort of informations from social media and which will help us to do information mining and definitely to take some decision activities so that's why this based on this media we are trying to concentrate on the clustering problem using genetic algorithm. The clustering is one of the problem where we try to categorize the different sort of data set and especially if you are working with huge data set then definitely we can give emphasis on clustering where clustering algorithm help us to mine data very easily if you are having categorical information then different sort of uh, other problems also we can uh, answer with 
like summarization and different sort of problem. So generally we see that uh, in social media, we have different sort of data sets, like uh, which are not too much structured and not at all structured, which is consist of different stickers, different URLs, different smileys, some abbreviation, different sort of texts are there. So constructive uh, texts are not actually made for social media because every time when we try to feel free to communicate with each other, so we don't use that formal communication. So it is also a challenge to find mine information from there. So as we can see that a few data sets are uh, given as a toy data set and we can come out with some different and categorization within, within a single topic and definitely we can do some sort of clustering. So here is a few of the um, challenges what we have to meet if you're working with some Twitter based data set or any social media data set. We need some pre-processing of the data where we need to remove different sort of punctuations, white spaces and different non-textual characters, smileys, different actions we need to take care of it. And after that, we are just going through to process the data set. So as I have mentioned that we have worked with genetic algorithms, so it is the basic work to prepare the population matrix. And then after we will be applying different sort of steps of genetic algorithm, like mutation, crossover, and all this. So that's why, first of all, as the data set is not too much structured, some sort of vector representation of the entire data set is highly required that we can easily prepare the population matrix for this one. So this is one of the representation of the data set, how we can really represent any sort of unstructured data using some document or matrix. So here we can represent all the data in the row wise and the columns are based on different sort of sorted words, what we have collected from our bag of words. So this is the representation of that one. And thereafter, we need to prepare the population set for this. We need to design the chromosomes, which are actually the chromosomes are the arbitrary solutions what we currently have. And based on this solution, we will try to find out some near after in future what the better solution we can prepare. So for this reason, we can use some of the optimization techniques. So here are some of the chromosome metrics are designed, which are the population metrics. And along with this population metrics, one factor is very important, that is fitness factor. Because how long a particular solution can fit into the system and it will stay perform well with respect to the environmental uh, features. So for this reason, we need to find out different sort of, uh, uh, of techniques are there to find out different sort of fitness uh, values. So in this work, we have tried to design our fitness function as we are working with different sort of clustering algorithms. So we are trying to help of tech help of the cluster evaluation techniques, and we are trying to design our own uh, fitness function values. So here from the data set, we are trying to design the chromosomes. And when we are having a chromosome for each and every chromosome, we can take a projection matrix from the original data set and we can represent it here. So this is the way how we can formulate the fitness function because every time, whenever we are finding any solution, it needs to be fitted with the system. So we are trying to apply a fitness function where the DB index is used as the clustering measuring technique. And thereafter, we can work with this DB index and definitely the number of features what we are having in your hand, that is also a measure. So that's why we try to consider in this way. And thereafter, from the selection population matrix, we use Rolteville wheel method for choosing the particular chromosomes. And then we can do perform it for the next uh, factor. That is the factor that what we try to find out in crossover. And we try to jumble up the solutions and try to find out some new solution, new set of solution, combining the solutions, what best fit solution what we have. And then we can come out some new solutions. So the new population matrix in this way, we can uh, come up with new solutions and we need to check it out that whether the solutions are better than the previous one or not. So as it is a genetic algorithm, so multiple uh, st stages and multiple iterations, we can uh, iterate and finally we can reach to a particular solution. And thereafter, 
when we are trying to find out uh, this sort of solution, which is the best one, we can consider that particular projection matrix will give you the best clustering outcome and to check out that whether this clustering algorithm, whether it performs well or not, we try to take help of different sort of classical matrices and we try to check the outcome that whether it, are, it is performing better or not. And these are the, some of the evolution techniques what we have tried to use like uh, the SILHO and CH index, DB index, I index. These are some of the index which are maximization index. Some of the indexes are there which are minimization index. So we check for both of them and we try to get some good outcome from this one. And definitely as it is a clustering problem, it is not a supervised problem. So we try to gather some of the expert opinion which shows us that different clusters can be there in the data set that can be number of four, five, six. For, so for all different variations, we try to come out with the outcomes and we see it's a quite a good outcome what we get for the evolutionary algorithms. And we are quite hopeful that definitely it will give us the good outcome than the old classification models. Because every time what we see, if it is a structured data, it works very fine. But if it is not a structured data, if it is a very inconsistent data, sparse data, many times we need to take help of some another algorithms or we need bit modification so that we can get some optimization to a good technique. And at the same time, this work, uh, what we have tried to contribute, we are trying to take help of not only the clustering algorithm, at the same time, we try to do the clustering multiple times until unless we got to reach the best fitted solution with the help of genetic algorithm. So this is another work I just come into the highlight that not only the genetic algorithms, there are different AI techniques also, which can help us to find out different sort of medical predictions, because we know there are different after, especially after the era of COVID, we have seen the in the academic world, there are different solutions and different outcomes are coming, especially to predict in different sort of medical working. Medical, entire the medical and world has come into a uh, quite a deep highlight that different techniques are specially made that how we can predict different sort of solution for different sort of diseases. Not only this, how our genetic uh, uh, orders and then genetic disorders which can predict that whether you, you will be having any particular disease in future or not, that also can be devised from different sort of researches. So that's why uh, with this inspiration, we try to apply some of the AI techniques using uh, fuzzy inference system, and we try to find out the cancer prediction. So we know this is a huge, um, uh, large number of women uh, really suffer from breast cancer. So we try to take care of some of the best uh, cancer data sets, uh, which are, we are taken care of for uh, different sort of experiments here. And there are a few factors. Uh, every time we don't know that the cancer goes to the last stage and then after we came to know. So there are some of the algorithms, genetic algorithms that can also help you. And at the same time, if there are the certain age, if you are having uh, some sort of uh, problems of if you are having some sort of measurements, what you try to take from your pathological outcomes. So that analysis can predict that whether that you are having any sort of leukemia problem or not, or any cancerous tendency or not. So there we have tried to collect few of the features here, which will actually help you out to find out that whether we can predict the different sort of cancers, and especially we concentrated in this case in breast cancer. So that specific number of uh, we have taken many times we have seen that many uh, patients got uh, get diagnosis uh, by a tumor operation and there is no probability of the cancer but what will be the tumor size what will be the root cap values so these are quite very very important which help you out to find out that whether the particular disease is leading to uh, cancer or not so that's why we have tried to take help of basic uh, some fuzzy rule-based system where we have done the basic data set what we got. We try to do fuzzification. After that, we try to design the rules based on the outcomes what we have. And then after the fuzzification, we try to deliver the outcomes. So framing with the framing of each and every features, we try to analyze that what can be the 
what can be the exact measurement, what can be the exact impact of each and every feature with your particular disease. So it can be age, it can be tumor size, anything. So that we try to define here. You can see in the graph, some overlapping areas are there. So where, why we are here concentrated on fuzzy logic system? Because we know that whenever we don't have any particular group solution, so definitely we need to go for fuzzy based system. It can help out to give you a better solution. So there are a few rules what we have tried to design for different sort of system. In this way, totally, we have tried to devote, devise around 56 rules. There few were given in this uh, as a demo. And totally, the entire data set we try to map for each and every data that how the particular data is getting fitted with each and every rules. And it is giving you the probability, it is giving you, showing you the probability how the cancer can be detected. And after the implementation of the rules, we are trying to combine all the graphs because each and every graph or each and every rule will give you some different solutions. So after a certain finding out all the solutions, we need to combine all the outcomes. That's why we try to combine, take a combined graph, and we try to calculate the center of the gravity, that which is the majority or one of the center of the gravity is graph, this voting also you can see, which will give you one of the outcome that how you can take the center of the gravity or the major portion which is covered, you can get the outcome from this one. And these are the some of the other techniques what we try to take apart from because the data set, what we have taken that is a classification data set, a supervised data set. So definitely we try to find out some different basic classifier and we see that uh, our system quite giving better outcome from the general classification outcome. As uh, these are, this is actually addressing the overlapping areas. So definitely in future also we are working with this, the team is working with some different sort of math, uh, uh, problem where some different diseases we are trying to predict. Not only this, we know that our research has come into that section that we are predicting different sort of waves nowadays because how a particular, what can be the after the mutation, as I was talking about uh, some genetic algorithms, so different sort of mutation can be there and we can see the nature of the viruses is getting changed. So how a particular mutation when the viruses are taking help of this to mutate themselves, to make themselves stronger. So it is also our responsibility being the researcher that we can implement different sort of method that we can go ahead of them and we can predict some good outcome and accordingly we can lead our own life for some sustainable methods so this is all about my talk and this is my mail out mail id it is mentioned here i'm also available in the facebook linkedin so feel free to talk to me feel free to contact me for further collaborations Thank you so much, uh, ma'am, for your eloquent presentation. Our next speaker, Ms. Masuda Yasmin, is a professor of character, intelligence, strength, and style. That makes her a very beautiful person. Now I invite Dr. Dipali Gupta for the introduction of Mr. Ms. Masuda Yasmin, MD Reliable Educational Trust India, Nazi. Thank you, Tanisha, ma'am. It is a matter of great pride to welcome and introduce Ms. Yasmin. Ms. Masuda Yasmin is an adjibrana. She is the founder of National Institute for Foundation Teachers, the managing director of Reliable Education Group, and also manager of Early Childhood Education India. She has 14 years of work experience in education industry with 10 years of exclusive experience in preschool management, administration, academic curricular development, academic and activity planning, pre-primary and primary class teachers training. She is well versed with the core areas of development of a child. She is also into research and development of government education policies, their implementation and their effectiveness. She is working as West Bengal State President for Education Policy Council. She is the State Joint Secretary of Private Schools and Child Welfare Association. Ms. Yasmin is a global ambassador for Global Research Foundation. Welcome you, ma'am. It is our honor to hear you. Over to you, ma'am.
Uh, thank you so much, Dipali ji, for the warm welcome. It was such a great introduction. <laughs> I was feeling such a uh, warm welcome from your side. And uh, my heartfelt thanks to uh, Ajay Jayanji and Research Foundation of India for giving me an opportunity to be a part of your organization, to be a part of, of this uh, great event. And uh, as an early childhood educator, I would first discuss about uh, uh, sustainable development goals in early childhood. I would be discussing about sustainable development goals in early childhood education. Basically, when we talk about early childhood education, uh, we are wrongly taken that it's only the pre-primary education or the literacy part ki ABCD padhana hai. But early childhood education is not exactly about teaching A, B, C, D or 1, 2, 3, 4 to a 3 year old child. It is about the holistic development of a child. When we talk about early childhood education, we talk about uh, cognitive skill development. We are focused about uh, motor skill developments. We are uh, focused on language and literacy, language and vocabulary develop development. We are focused on, we are focused on uh, social, behavioral, emotional and uh, cognitive development of the child. And uh, why these years are very important, let me clear you. There are much evidence to support that import uh, support the importance of early childhood uh, early childhood development to their health and well being in later life, and it's uh, uh, proven that uh, it's proven that uh, uh, more than ninety percent of the brain development takes before the age of uh, before the age of uh, your uh, uh, six years. Children experience greatest rate of development during their early years and the first five years are crucially and critically important uh, years in brain development. While connections in brain are made throughout the life, the rapid pace at which the brain develop in these five years are never repeated. And as human beings, it has as a human being, it is important to have a strong foundation and aspect of personality as emotional, social, mental and physical developments. A large a part of critical brain development in children happens before they, they start their uh, kindergarten. It impacts everything from school performance to lifelong social skills. And children who take part in early childhood education program have improved social skills. Children with uh, uh, children will learn to express their emotions better, like happiness, sadness, anger, because uh, if they are exposed and if the emotional, if we can go with the proper so emotional development of a child at with the right age. A, child, a person's team uh, teamwork capability is based on their respect for others and op uh, others' opinions, listening skills, mental mentality towards equality, and these e equalities should be taught at at early age only. Early age only. Humans are uh, very social beings. Are very social beings, and are the, and the main concept of socialization takes root at early years. In a safe, safe, uh, safe environment, in a in a safe environment, away from family, children meet uh, ch uh, children meet various people of their age, sow the seeds of socialization and friendship in their young minds, and this will help them develop confidence in the uh, in uh, for later years by eliminated the, by eliminating their shy nature. During this phase, children learn to share, cooperate, take turns, and so on. And these are all part of secure social life. And uh, this is especially uh, beneficial for, a, uh, for uh, not only for a child who is familiar. familiar uh, this, uh, this is especially beneficial for a, only a child who is not familiar with having some uh, uh, having to share things in a group setting 
children can work with the, uh, with their listening skills with numerous children around and only uh, and the teachers they will naturally learn to take turns and other things circle time is also an excellent structure time for listening and taking turns the life the life uh, <clears throat> the life or uh, the time of life is uh, this time of life is so important that important uh, that uh, then learning the uh, for learning the necessary skills and preparing for k12 education in preschool programs children learn how to interact with their classmates teachers parents and they start to discover interest that they they hold for lifetime even our nep uh, after uh, 34 four years of uh, we have come up with our, uh, the government has come up with nep 2020 and this is going to be a revolution in this sector because for the first time it's added as in the importance of early childhood uh, education is taken care of um, care of and uh, one of the most significant importance of early childhood education is, is that it builds a love for learning that last uh, last well uh, past the uh, preschool years in pre, uh, in preschool children's lesson are presented as fun games and activities they get to discover these things about the world they are living in they are excited this there is also exciting music art and toys they don't have to access that they don't access at home these early exposures inspire child to uh, to want to know more and they develop a passion for knowledge that will last for them lifetime and now let me talk about something which is a very great hindrance while we talk about quality of early childhood education because as i earlier told you it's wrongly taken as teaching a b c d to a child it's not like that early childhood education has a vast spectrum and the very difficult thing that we come across is uh, and not only in india but in maximum of the major uh, of the developing countries even in few of the developed uh, developed countries that we don't have the trained man force or the trained mentor we don't have the trained mentor who can take care of early uh, who can take care of uh, um, what to say uh, teaching the children or uh, educating the children mainly not i won't say teaching but uh, uh, training the uh, students because training a uh, early uh, students with early minds that they are growing at that stage is quite different because it's like uh, uh, it's uh, very uh, uh, very crucial that we should know proper methodologies we should be aware of how to handle the child how to build connections with it and it's very important to come with a trained workforce and secondly the co- uh, curriculum the curriculum has to be have a great thing the curriculum plays a very great uh, thing while we are talking about early childhood education because uh, as i told you it's about holistic development and not only about what we are teaching them a b c d or something so the curriculum have every sense that gives a child that supports a child's holistic development and we at global foundation for early childhood education are really working hard to um, Uh, uplift or elevate the uh, uh, education uh, early childhood education in india and worldwide and i hope uh, will be able to succeed in future and thank you ajay ji you are doing a great job and thank you research foundation of india it's uh, really a very tremendous job that you are doing very great job thank you so much Thank you so much, ma'am, for your vivacious and invigorating words. Gratitude is the healthiest of all emotions. 
the more you express gratitude for what you have, the more likely you will have even more to express gratitude for. So to propose the formal vote of thanks, I invite the proficient and knowledgeable Dr. Ravi Vyasa, please. Thank you, Tanisha, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Acknowledging the good that you already have in your life is the foundation of all abundance. Esteemed dignitaries present in the event, respected director, Reverend Father Simon Raj, Principal Dr. Sister Elise Thomas, Dr. Saurabh Kumar Jain, Chairman and CEO of RFI, Professor Dr. Ashok Kumar Gupta Ji, CMD RFI, Dr. Ajay Kumar Jain Ji, National Coordinator of RFI, Dr. Manish Dubey, President Central India Board, RFI, Dr. Sanjay Prasad, State President, MP RFI, esteemed guests of the event, Mr. Von Eric, Dr. Noor Eni, Mr. Jackson Dukka, Dr. Somi Datta, Ms. Masuda Yasmin, our resource person for technical session, Dr. Gunjan Shukla, Dr. Ankita Jain, members of research and general committee, SPIPS, other RFI delegates, valued presenters, participants from different colleges, faculty member of SPIPS, dear students, good afternoon. I, Dr. Ravi Vyas, feel honored and privileged to propose a formal book of thanks, at most faith and gratitude to Lord Almighty for successful organization of third international virtual conference jointly hosted by SPIPS and RFI. I am grateful to our respected director, Reverend Father Simon Raj, for his encouraging and motivational word he has given in his inaugural address. I express my sincere gratitude to special guests, Mr. Von Eric, Dr. Noor Eni, Dr. Jackson Dukka, Dr. Somi Datta, Ms. Masuda Yasmin for enlightening us through their words of wisdom and inspiration and sparing their precious time for all of us. I express my gratefulness to Dr. Sister Ellis Thomas for guiding and protecting all of us with her prayerful words. Your words of wisdom will surely help us to get our direction in our life system. With utmost gratitude, I wanted to thank Dr. Saurabh Kumar Jain for his collaborative efforts to organize this conference. I express my sincere thanks to Dr. Ashok Kumar Gupta for his words of blessings and illumination Sir, your speech always motivates us and guides us towards progress. I want to thank Dr. Ajay Kumar Jainji, Dr. Manish Dubeji, Dr. Sanjay Prasadji, and the entire team of RFI for untiring efforts, energetic, committed, and valuable support with wholehearted cooperation they have given to organize this competition. I am also thankful and appreciate the efforts of our presenters and participants who have come from different institutes in this conference to contribute their valued part in the event. I would like to thank our energetic and committed team of members of research and general committee, starting from Dr. Vivek Kaushik, Dr. Meghna Raikar, Dr. Ajay Patil, Professor Tanisha Dalal, and the members of faculty of Kim Spips for their valuable support and cooperation for the conference. The generous efforts put in by Mr. Yogaraj Panchale deserves appreciation and applause. Thank you all once again from this stage. Thank you so much, Ravi, sir, for your obliging and pleasing word of thanks. We have officially come to the end of the inaugural session. So for the second phase of the program, that is paper presentation and technical session, I invite Dr. Meghna Raikar to take over, ma'am, please. Meghna, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tanisha, ma'am. Uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you, dear. The world is full of diamonds and gems. 
and we are having some of the research oriented scholars and academicians here with us to build this international conference a fruitful one on behalf of St. Paul Institute of Professional Studies and Research Foundation of India, I, Dr. Meghna Raikar, would like to welcome and heartiest welcome to the director's peps, Reverend Father Simon Raj, respected principal, Dr. Sister Alice Thomas, chairman and CEO RFI, Dr. Saurabh Kumar Jain, RFI CMD professor, Dr. Ashok Kumar Gupta, all esteemed guests, Invitee, Mission Chair, and, and Dr. Gunjan Shukla. A very pleasant good afternoon to each and everyone. Before heading towards the commencement of the technical session, I would love to share some important guidelines to present your papers. So please. Please uh, listen to these guidelines carefully. Paper presenters are requested to share main objectives and specifically focus more on their research outcomes. Presenters can share their PPTs as they know. Screen sharing mode is on. Time allotted for presentation is five to seven minutes. My heart is brimming with joy at the privilege of introducing our very illustrious session chair, Dr. Anita Jain, Assistant Professor Shri Vaishnava Institute of Management and Research in the she has teaching experience of more than seven years and involved in teaching subjects like human resource management and organizational development, performance management, and other management oriented subjects at UG and PG level. She was invited for, for expert lectures. Uh, she has attended various national and international conferences and presented more, more than 30 papers and published more than 40 research papers, book chapters, and, and case studies. We would really love to welcome you, ma'am. As a mark of our joy and <clears throat> privilege of joy, may I have the privilege of introducing the session chair for the day, Dr. Gunjan Shukla. Dr. Gundin Shukla, Associate Professor, HOD School of Management and Director, IQAC Cell at Renesa University, Indore. Researcher and academician, she is gold medalist in her PG and financial management. She has also done MPhil in finance along with PhD in management. She has experience of 13 years in academics and administration. She also a certified parenting coach and international motivational speaker in the year 2010. She has received award from World Brahman Federation for being active in the field of education and art. In the year 
2021, she has received award for best presentation award in Global Summit on her presentation on SDG Goal 12. <clears throat> she, she has published her research papers in several national and international journals, also added three books on management. Recently, she has received Mrs. Madhya Pradesh in Mrs. India, one in a million at Tiska National Beauty region on December 25th, 2021. She is recently awarded with Global Woman Icon Award 2022 by Life Foundation. Latest received International Best Presentation Award again in 2022 on Goal 10 uh, of SDG. So we extend a warm welcome to the session chair and panels for the day and ask permission to begin the session. Shall we start the session, ma'am? Gunjan, ma'am, and Anita, ma'am? Sure, yes. ma'am. Yes. Okay. So with your uh, permission and uh, with the uh, permission and blessings for our uh, dignitaries and authorities, I love to start the se technical session. Friends, our life is based on pain, passion, and purpose. Similarly, the purpose of today's international virtual conference to make us all aware about challenges, opportunities, and innovation for sustainable future carrying sub-themes related to healthcare and well-being, environment and sustainable development, technology for the future and innovations. So without its pleasure to request Hamna Solanki ma'am has joined the there. Hello. Are you there? Am I audible to audible? So Deepak is just calling out these names. One is Yamini and Dr. Hey, they have messaged me. They'll be joining in. Uh, follow the sequence. Okay, so on Bosco has joined the meeting. Uh, I request Father, uh, Father, yeah, uh, Unhappy situation, and we also find in the fam uh, family, parents, uh, and they also find it's their own within self 
hide behind adequacy of their weaknesses, insecurity with themselves, attention seekers, no empathy for others. So these are the uh, character of uh, bullies we find. And in my research, I took uh, four places to observe. I followed the uh, observation method. Uh, school campus, playground, uh, classrooms, and cy cyber calf, especially using the mobile. And we got this uh, effectless bullying. Uh, because of which uh, I choose the topic. The effect of bullying is the student who bully, in, they have, and they also being bullied, increase anxiety levels, low, feeling of lonely, uh, lowless, loneliness and isolation, low self esteem, increase stress levels, feel insecure, uh, highly depression, and a change in uh, sleep and uh, eating pattern for developing mental health issues, uh, future long term problems and low academic purpose, low personality, low self-concept. And we, as Renale, I take it for, uh, the study aims at uh, to determine the effect of rich well-being on self-concept, personal traits of students are in need at the time of learning difficulties. Uh, to help bullying students change their behavior pattern and develop better coping mechanism and develop positive mechanism to rich value. So that's how the ritual, effective spirituality to increase the uh, personality, academic performance, and uh, self personal traits. The main object is I bring it to two points. This research aims at the effect of ritual and self self concept and personal traits among bully adolescent students belonging ninth to twelfth grade from two CBSC board English medium schools to study. We are bullying behavior in adolescent students through observation belonging to urban and rural areas of indoor districts. Just to give the definition of self concept very shortly, self concept A concept shows that a person refers to himself or herself in keeping with uh, how someone thinks about, evaluates, or perceives them. And self concept is one who comes to know who oneself is. It has three components, parts, according to Carl Rogers. And what is personality traits? Every individual has his or her own personality traits. It defines the feelings and the behavior of the individual. According to psychologists, we categorize them in five openness, consciousness, uh, extraversion, and agreeableness, and neutralism. So there are five personalities are there. So the bullies, they lose this kind of uh, self concept personalities. So to have more knowledge from this field, I took, uh, I also went to find out from uh, former research authors. So in that one, I would like to call the self concept. Uh, Judith, in her study, a correlation study of self concept and spirituality in seminarians. So this finding, uh, showed that the spirituality can play a greater role in the self concern and change that uh, significant uh, significant change in the their own self so, yeah, personality traits also i in the research background i find put in uh, in our five factor model personality traits spirituality uh, like religiousness and mental health uh, among living with uh, hiv so this file finding also shows there is a, a great change using the spirituality in person's life. So the personality traits changes in life. I come to here. Yeah, my I apply my measurement spiritual uh, treatment and, and, and advantages. There are three reasons I would like to uh, present now why I took spirituality. Ritual treatment burns all the past tools of the burden and obstacles to arrive at a complete release. The bully is inspired to have self-confidence and to have a real purpose. Bully is activated into more expansive happiness, uh, outlook and real life orientation. It will help in evaluation of self-concern and develop the positive personality traits. That's how it becomes very healthy and uh, healthy. Uh, healthy and also happy growth in life. I take measurements. Uh, there are different options are there. Options are presented here as a measurement. Uh, 
ritual counseling to the police based on the personal center therapy according to Karnavash. And this, it, it has a lot of uh, emphasis, uh, personal oriented and uh, emotional feelings, empathy. Uh, there are a lot of uh, psychological technicals are used to change a person's life, what was past and what can be new. And second, there is option is the spirituality through yoga. And we all know in our Indian culture, it plays a big role in our spirituality and gives you a modern a new way of life in day-to-day -day life. And third, I take option for physical exercises. And fourth one is spirituality through meditation. Fifth is uh, spirituality of role play. And uh, sixth is uh, spirituality of inspirational story. And seventh is spirituality of team building games. So all these measurements gives a new way, a new ideology, a change of life completely. The outcome of the study is to reduce the bullying behavior to highlight the impact of spirituality, higher understanding of self and personality among bullies, to their soul to build the mental health and happiness of the students at the school, as well as at the school. Any questions, please? Hello. Father. Yes, thanks for your presentation. I hope uh, thank you. Much scholars uh, about the ample opportunity and knowledge from your research work. So moving on, now I would like to uh, recall Bhavna Solanki ma'am or Deepak sir if they join in the meeting. Otherwise... Ma'am, uh, Shresh Chhabra sir is there. Shresh Chhabra sir is there. Jee, jee, so jee, uh, I would love to call Yamini S. Chajilani uh, ma'am and Dr. Shresh Chhabra ma'am for their presentation. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Uh, Dr. Chhabra here. Uh, am, am I audible? Yes. Audible. Okay, okay. Thank you. So I, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to uh, and a very good afternoon to all who are, who are present over here, uh, Father John uh, and Namibia sir, especially uh, who have worked with for years together, Gunjan uh, Shukla ma'am, RFI, uh, <coughs> Ajay Jain uh, sir from RFI, so everyone uh, who's present over here. Uh, and I, I would like to share my screen. Uh, So I am presenting on behalf of, uh, uh, my screen is visible to everyone. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, so I'm presenting on behalf of authors, myself and Ramini. Uh, and I, I've picked up a, a topic uh, which is based on the theme of this conference, uh, that how we can work towards a better sustainable future. Uh, within the de limited uh, given time, I would uh, finish off my, especially the poor countries which are used as a dumping yard uh, for the western uh, <clears throat> you know, developed countries. If I just share a, a figure with you in Nigeria, 15 shipping containers of e-waste arrive every day. So you can imagine that you know, how, how this thing, uh, they, they operate on <clears throat> the, the waste produced. And this is just I'm talking about the e-waste. So the waste that they produce is being dumped over in this country. And we are growing each by, uh, you know, on every day we are growing amount, we have got a growing amount of plastic waste that is growing and that is estimated to be 200 million metric tons. And we should know this idea that uh, out of the entire plastic that we produce, only 10% of the plastic is recycled, despite of the fact that recycled plastic is cheaper than the new plastic production. And bottles are one of the most you know, recycled items. So these are the different types of uh, paper or uh, the waste that can be recycled or that may be recycled. What can be? Uh, there is no limit onto the thought or onto the idea that how we can, uh, you know, what all we can think about uh, <coughs> recycling of the waste. Vinjan Ma'am would recall that how in Renessa we created that. Uh, Sustainable fashion idea, uh, the project of sustainable idea, uh, fashion. <clears throat> so, like say for example, Eco Hike. I just share one example. Is that one T-shirt made by Eco Hike would be by recycling 12 pet bottles, and 
you know, it would also save uh, just 2,600 liters of water that goes in growing a cotton for making a T-shirt. So we can always look out for recyclable ideas, recyclable products. Now, I, there are hundreds of examples of companies doing this. For our presentation purpose, we have chosen few of them. Uh, like say, uh, the man that uh, is seen in this picture, Dr. Raj Gopal and Vasudevan, uh, the Parmushi awardee, sir, uh, is uh, known as the plastic man of India. And we should be you know, happy to know this, that around 700 kilometers of highway uh, in India has been built about by using plastic in some or the other way. And this technology has now been adopted by Australia, USA, UK, and many other countries. Uh, we understand that uh, you know there is a huge lot of waste cars which are produced by temples every day. So whether it may be uh, Mahakal or it may be our own Khadirana temple, uh, this, this there is a company which can you know which, which does this that they, they pick up all this. Uh, uh, flowers which have been offered to God after they have been uh, taken out from the temple, then they recycle it. They, they pick up flowers from uh, River Ganga also. They recycle it and create, create chlorine and incense sticks and you know, biodegrade other fertilizers and other things. Look at this uh, chai and biscuit uh, type of thing. It's a Madurai based tea chaos, a small chaiwala which sells these chocolate flavored biscuit cups. and. Uh, once you are done with the tea, it can hold the hot tea for 10 minutes. When you are done with the tea, you can uh, actually eat the vapor cup. Uh, so that, that can be, you know, simple innovations like this. The disposable plates, we are all used to in some or the other manner, disposable plates. So, you know, waste which is left out of the sugar cane, you know, once the sugar cane is processed and that can be even, uh, you know, it's, it's in tons when it comes to sugar producing every day. So the waste which is left over, which is, you know, which is just uh, gone into dumping yards. So, chuck disposable plates. This this uh, innovative company has picked up this uh, dump from uh, the dumping yards of uh, sugar mills, and they have converted into disposable plates. Another idea is this uh, of China Eco Unified. So what all you can see on the pictures is made up from the uh, recyclable plastic, and it's. This itself is recyclable also. The indoor waste company of Carat <coughs> uh, so you know, they are again into producing uh, boxes, uh, pencils, spoons. You know, we, we, this is what something we have seen, might have seen in, uh, in many parties. So this is our own indoor waste organization. Uh, Another indoor waste uh, beautiful example is this one. We are ranked as uh, you know, the most cleanest city in the country. So this is another example of how, what all we can contribute, what we all we are contributing to this environment. And I should feel that as an Indori, I, I feel proud about this, uh, <coughs> inaugurated by our uh, respected PM. And uh, it, this plant is able to produce uh, biogas, organic compost, it's situated near, uh, <coughs> you know, where we use all this vegetable waste and everything, we use everything like this. So around 400 buses, 50% of this would be running on this bio CNG that we are, rest of the 50% that would be sold out. So this project is there in uh, of our indoor itself. So all in all, you know, out of this small thing, I just want to, there are hundreds of examples that would have covered, but we all need a small, or what I can say, a reinforcement. You all understand that uh, without sustainability, we don't have any future. So in our own way, in our own small way, as a citizen, as a customer, let's try and do that. Thank you very much for your patient listening and thank you very much for your time given to us. With any questions, if you have, I would be happy to answer. Thank you, Dr. Hello. Yes, please. Hello. Thank you so much, Sabra, sir, for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank yes. you. Very much. Now I would like to uh, call Mr. Amit Kumar Srivastava and his uh, research topic is a study on payment system pandemic COVID-19. Amit sir, are you there? Amit Kumar Srivastava, are you there in the meeting? Hello, am I audible? Hello. Uh, Amit sir, are you there? Yes sir, over to you. Good afternoon ma'am, good afternoon to all of you. 
May I? Sorry. Yes, you please start your presentation. You can share your PPT. Okay, ma'am. Okay, okay. Good afternoon, all of, you, all of you. My topic is a study on payment system during pandemic COVID-19. At that time, we all have faced the so many problems for face-to-face -face interaction and anybody don't test anything like paper and money, etc. So it is the very good platform that is online trading or digital banking is the, is the boon of the payment receiving and paying anywhere across the country or entire the country. At the introduction, India is going to become cashless. When, when India will cashless, there will, there our, when, then when will India will cashless, the, our economy will grow because we, we have faced too many people are hiding their incomes. Too many people are hiding their income for tax payment. When, whenever it will cashless, all the payments would be in the digital form. No one can pay in the cash. Then in Indian economy will grow. It's a part of the growing stage in the future. But in the introduction stage, during the COVID-19, we all have faced the problem that uh, in, in entire the town, village, and city also. So we opt the platform like uh, internet banking, mobile banking, and digital payments in the COVID-19 seasons. The advantage of the electronic payment system or uh, digital payment system is retransaction cost, save time and resources, speed of e-payments, complete visibility, contactless, instant payment, higher payment securities, better customer convenience, and safe processing cost low risk and transparent of the, all the transactions. The challenges of the online payment system, like uh, when we are, when we pay money to anyone or in, in our business, reach the global audience, it is also can improve the customer experiences, transactions are more convenient online, e-payments, but accepting online payment can also pose the problem for us or our customers technical issues like we when we when we frustrated shoppers we cannot pay our <coughs> outcast then it will technical problem in india we face in the uh, in the covid 19 too many people are not operating the uh, android cell but now these days people are interested to pay their money in the online system they are with Pay by the mode of any apps like Gmaps and others. Security problem is here, like uh, hackers. Hackers are hacking their passwords and uh, other things. So customers are reluctantly used to the e-payments because uh, they want to use the, the online payments. But with the fear of the hackers, they are avoiding this time. Now these days we. We heard that uh, anyone calls to people that uh, give me your Aadhaar number, give me your PAN card number, give me your, your OTP has gone to your mobile, please tell me. These types of uh, challenges is here in the online payment systems, but we have to be aware at the time of payment system using the apps and others. In the conclusion of the, my topic, the impact of COVID-19 is landscape has been profound uh, our significant it not irreparable element in the payment uh, ecosystem are most adaptable to disturbs and least dependent on the physical infrastructure have been able to better and might tend to even for the capitalize and crisis minimum and imminent threat of their advantage the pandemic compared individual as well as organization to re-evaluate their payment framework and infrastructure in mitigation and the impact of the COVID-19 digital economy has been complex and multi-phase the increased adaptation in the short term and likely accelerate the shift towards digital payment. 
which can only be capitalized upon by due agility and versatility to anticipate change. This was the topic of this was the presentation from my side, ma'am. If any question from you, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, ma'am, any question, ma'am? I think uh, no queries right now. So thank you so much, Amit sir, for your presentation. Now Priya Golani uh, is already ready. So Priya, you can share your PPT. Good afternoon, yes. one and all. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Myself, Priya Golani, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, St. Paul Institute of Professional Studies. If you all permit me, can I share my presentation, please? Yes, ma'am, please. Yes, hope it is visible. It is I visible. just hope. Okay. Yes, it is visible. Please. Go okay. Ahead. The topic that I tend to discuss today is the role of technology in sustainable development. Let's begin by understanding the meaning of sustainable development first. The concept of sustainable development was derived from the World Commission on Environment and Development's Brooklyn Report, Our Common Future. It has defined development that meets the needs of present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. The contribution of our common future is threefold. Firstly, it explains what sustainable development is. Secondly, it describes about the driving factors to tackle the situation of crisis. And finally, it redefines the traditional definition of development. Sustainable development is the guiding principle to meet economic development goals while simultaneously sustaining the ability of natural resources on which the economy and society depends. Now, moving on to the next seg segment, let's just examine the reasons that led to the evolution of the concept of sustainable development. Life on the planet Earth is on the verge of extinction as the life supporting natural systems are depleting rapidly. Rapid economic growth and development, globalization, urbanization has led to the current scenario of ecological crisis, characterized by food insecurity, poverty, inequality, population burst, air, water and land pollution, habitat and biodiversity loss, global warming, increased carbon emissions, etc. These consequences demanded for a new model of development that is growth oriented but at the same time conscious about environment and society. So the objectives of sustainable development can be broadly classified as economic growth, which is an indicator of increased production of goods and services in an economy. Environmental protection calls for economic growth and conservation and protection of natural resources. And finally, social inclusion, a development that seeks to fulfill the needs of the people. Furthermore, the United Nations General Assembly defined 17 interlinked sustainable development goals in year 2015, which are targeted to be achieved by 2030. This 2030 agenda was developed as the future global development framework to succeed the Millennium Development Goals, which ended in 2015. Now, talking about the recent trends of sustainable development, the world economy is working towards sustainable future by implementing various models of sustainability like circular economy, clean transportation, transparency in operations, waste management, sustainable food production, sustainable finance, etc. The basic points that these trends highlight is the role of technology in sustainable development. Science and technology can always better understand the cause and effect relationship of any problem. As such, technology can definitely provide for a quantum leap that will sustain future life on the planet Earth. A deep diagnosis of sustainable development goals depicts that most of the goals are achievable by technological advancement, taking long-term sustainable goals as the pushing drivers. The key findings of this study explain that new mechanisms of growth and development have their orientation from technology. For example, 
the circular economy landscape outlines that technologies like artificial intelligence the internet of things blockchain and big data will play a prominent role in transition towards reduce reuse and recycle model of economy similarly biodiesel electricity ethanol hydrogen etc have come up as better fuel or energy options as against the ever environment polluting fossil fuels with a view to enhance food production without distorting the environment technologies like better crop management and pest control use of data and decision making smart irrigation self driven and gps enabled tractors moisture sensors drones etc have been developed moreover rainwater harvesting wastewater treatments conversion of salt water to fresh water are the innovative techniques to overthrow the problems of contaminated water water pollution and water scarcity finally use of biomaterials instead of cement for construction of buildings are better alternatives to reduce the carbon emissions caused due to production of concrete in abundance in a nutshell to conclude though technology will lead from front but education awareness collaborations and partnerships will be the pushing forces to aim and achieve the sustainable development goals the world is witnessing technology aided innovations like green economy circular economy green technology green chemistry electric vehicles renewable resources based fuels net zero carbon emissions smart agriculture etc hence it is a wise saying that technology will play a major role in achieving the sustainable development goals with this i end up with my presentation thank you very much hello thank you ma'am priya ma'am thank you so much ma'am nice presentation from your side now thank i would so love yes i would like to call uh, dr deepali gupta ma'am deepali ma'am are you there stepford sir are you ready yes ma'am ma ma stepford sir are you ready so i would like to call uh, Prof dr stepford anthony for his presentation thank you ma'am ma'am shall i share the screen yes sir yes sir uh, his topic is acceptance of health gadgets among indoor consumers during covid period 2022 We all would love to listen your presentation, sir. Please over to you. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, my screen is visible. Meghna, ma'am. Yes. Screen is visible. No, sir. Uh, now I think yes, it's visible. Yes, yes, it is visible now. Now it is yes, visible. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So good afternoon, all the dignitaries, uh, respected director Father Simon Raj, respected principal Dr. Sister Louise Thomas, and all the members present in this uh, international conference. I, uh, Dr. Stafford Anthony, and in this research, uh, my co-part co-author Professor Madhvi Dharani. We are uh, happy to share our research topic in front of you, as mentioned over the slide. That is the acceptance of health gadgets. among indoor consumers during covid period uh, the study done in 2022 now we all know that in last 3 years we have came across uh, the three waves of pandemic and we have seen that how covid had created an upside down in our lives and definitely uh, it gives a alarming situation for all of us that we need to shift from a reactive healthcare management to a proactive healthcare management seeking this in mind this topic of that whether the health gadgets are really a sense that could help the consumers in indoor to do this shift from reactive healthcare management to a proactive healthcare management is the acceptance is there or not the whole purpose of the research was moving forward with the introduction now what are health gadgets they provide us various benefits to the user whether it is doctors or individual users themselves it allows them to capture monitor and analyze the real data which often and practically remain uncaptured in the absence of data this real time question yes this real time question makes a difference and defines each moment 
and our daily life activities. Hence, the user, the patient, will not need to require fixing an appointment or undergoing nervousness and stress while visiting the doctor. That actually what happened, and that also after developing symptoms of disease in the body. Such efficient monitoring and tracking also catalyzes the line of treatment provided by physicians and doctors with improved diagnosis and disease management. So, the purpose of the study, as I already mentioned, or this paper, is to empirically examine the factors enhancing consumers' attitude and intention to use health gadget during COVID situation using a sample representative of indoor users. Moving forward, what are the major macro factors which affect health gadget adoption in India or specifically in this particular sample of indoor users? First, reduced, redu uh, reduction in mobile data tariffs. We have already seen that in last 15 years or from last decade to this decade, there is a huge reduction in the mobile data tariffs. The mobile plans are more lenient and user friendly. Increase in the number of smartphone. The use of smartphone has increased a lot and various e-commerce platform, which enables the user to be on mobile internet or on smartphone. We can see in this slide, the cost of mobile internet around the world, it is the average cost of one GB of mobile data in the selected countries. This data is from Statista in the year 2019. And India has the lowest 0.26 dollar per one GB tariff cost for the mobile data. So, the research gap. This is an empirical study which is required to understand the most important factor leading to the adoption of gadgets among indoor users. Health gadgets are one of the latest technological entrants and not much research is done in its consumer acceptance and adoption. Therefore, this was an effort to fill the existing gap. Now, coming directly to the research methodology that how we approach it. The sample was the working professionals from public and private sector organizations, specifically from IT firms and educational institutions. The sample was collected from responded from indoor. It is respondents were the professionals from private and public sector in the age group of 22 years to 54 years. Questionnaire were filled from 100 respondents. The convenience purposive sampling was used for data collection and for questionnaire development. The it was developed by researchers on the basis of the extended literature. There were two parts in the questionnaire. The first part was comprising of the demographics and the background data, while the second part was based on the question that were used to measure the factors of the hypothesis. Now, in order to analyze and measure the consumer acceptance of the health gadgets, especially during this COVID period or the post-COVID period, we have used the technology acceptance model. That is the TAM model given by Fred Davis in 1984. The technology acceptance model is extended to establish a significance and predictability of various factors, including the acceptance of health gadgets. We can see the model which has been given by the uh, Fred Davis, where the behavioral intention is governed by attitude to using it, and it is governed by the perceived usefulness, perceived ease of use, and then there is a block of external variables. So we have we have already predefined two variables which were defining the user intention. That was perceived ease of use and perceived usefulness. The references for the same has been shown. And for the external variables, we have defined three more variables. That is perceived security as per the study of Rokka ETL, perceived trust, the degree of reduction in perceived risk by Menmati ETL 2010 and perceived satisfaction, the pleasure or contentment one feels by using the health gadget by Shi and Wong study 2008. So we have, going back to the slide in this, the perceived ease of use and perceived usefulness were the, the predefined variables. And for the external variables, we have included three, that is perceived security, perceived trust, and perceived satisfaction. This is the proposed extended TEM model for the health gadget which we have shown where the ex identified extended variables has been mentioned and the predefined variables has been there and the relationship is being done. This is the 11 hypothesis that we have projected for this paper where the, we have shown the perceived use positively influences the perceived usefulness, perceived ease of use influences the perceived trust and the attitude. 
while the perceived usefulness positively influences the perceived trust perceived usefulness positively influences the intention of the user and the hypothesis six where perceived usefulness positively influences the attitude of the user for trust we have projected two hypotheses that is the perceived trust as a positive effect on intention of the user and perceived trust as a positive effect on the attitude of the user definitely uh, hypothesis h9 for attitude uh, significance over the intention of the users and last the perceived usefulness effect over the perceived satisfaction and perceived security over the perceived trust so these were the 11 hypotheses we projected now as per the pls structure equation modeling which we have applied version 2.0 this is the t values of hypothesis which we have found where four hypotheses were supported having the value more than 1.96 while other hypotheses were rejected so the supported hypotheses were that perceived ease of use had positive influence over perceived usefulness perceived security had positive influence over the perceived trust perceived trust affecting the user intention and perceived usefulness is directly affecting the perceived satisfaction so this slide shows the hypothesis analysis for all those four hypotheses which were supported by the study so we will discuss it one by one first seeking the hypothesis h1 it shows positive significance of perceived ease of use over perceived usefulness it means that if health gadgets are easy to use they are easily understandable the user believe that if they can easily it is used just wearing a, a a fitbit health band or having a headband or having a, a chip which is wear over their body if it is easy to use it is easily understandable hypothesis 7 it shows a positive significance of perceived trust over user intention which shows that intent towards health gadgets is more strengthened when indian user has strong trust and confidence over the health tracking efficiency it is very important the if the user feel that the the numbers the data the statistics which they are getting using this health gadget if that is more authenticated if suppose thinking about the oximeter reading is about seeing about the heart beats the number of steps taken if that is more efficient definitely their the their trust over the health gadget will increase the third hypothesis that is h11 which explain the positive significance between perceived security and user trust indian user prefer to carry out their health monitoring in secrecy that is important if the data is secured if the health data is not seen by others because most of them we know that if we have a diabetic problem we have a hypertension problem we try to avoid that other people in the society should know so thus if the security level of these gadgets uh, pertaining the health information is good the user trust will definitely increase h10 the hypothesis the highest level of significance is shown between the perceived usefulness and satisfaction it explained that if the user derive benefit from gadget then the satisfaction will definitely be achieved indian users definitely want that there should be some benefit in which they are investing 1000 bucks or 2000 bucks if the benefit is there either in the weight loss in their Uh, decrease or saturation of their diabetic level or control of their hypertension they will have a satisfaction now moving forward to those hypotheses which were rejected where it shows that the ease of use over the user trust it shows that legacy of the users for in person doctor visit most of us want that we need to go to the doctor we need to have that physical interaction just see sorry, the data about uh, the digits pepper sir uh, sorry to interrupt you in between Uh, we would love to uh, listen to your outcomes uh, if the time uh, limit is <laughs> so okay ma'am so understand. i guess something directly yes. to the company no issues yes, ma'am yes. uh, yes. that is perfectly fine so interpretation i will just uh, take two more minute if you allow yes 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 you please go okay. yes no issues ma'am yes, yes sir yeah just two, two more slides developing a sense of proactive health monitoring tracking where the factors ease of use and usefulness is definitely important but perceived satisfaction security and trust these are again three factors which are important moving forward to implication definitely this study might help to boost the sale of health gadget manufacturers and specifically in context to indoor buyers including certain features and specification which create more awareness and educate them thank you for my nice <laughs> slide
Yeah, Meghna, ma'am. Uh, Stafford, sir, thank you so much for your cooperation. You, I really thank enjoyed you, it. And thank now I would love to call here. Hema, ma'am. Are you there, Hema, ma'am? Hema Bharatwaj, Professor Hema Bharatwaj. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, Hema, ma'am. Right. You can thank share you so your picture. Meghna, ma'am, thank you so much. Uh, let me uh, allow to show my presentation uh, for my research paper. Yes, so, Is my screen visible? Not now, ma'am. Not exactly. Okay. Just give me one minute. <clears throat> After that, Manoj sir, please be ready. Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Uh, if it is not uh, executing and working, so you can please share some summary and not outcome related to your research work. Uh, fine, uh, but is my screen visible now? Now, now, now it is processing. Yes, ma'am. Please. All right. It is so, yes. So the presentation, uh, the research paper that I have made was on uh, is on future prospects of artificial intelligence in education. So, <clears throat> let me explain what is artificial intelligence first. It refers to the system where the uh, the machines are performing in a way uh, using human intelligence. Now, it can be done with the help of algorithms and identification of the patterns. So, uh, we all know that artificial intelligence is a form of technology uh, where the machines are mimicking human beings. And therefore, it is called as artificial intelligence. In, in this research paper, uh, I have tried to find out what are the prospects of AI into education. So what are the AI trends that are going on into the education right now? And what can be done in future? So uh, I have proposed an educational model, a smart model of AI, uh, and uh, trying to uh, cover few points into that through which the AI uh, educational, uh, the smart model is going to help teachers and students in, in these five points, which is accepting today's uh, technology in the form of internet, latest computers, like all the smart gadgets we can use into uh, our education system. Second is the automation task. There are such tasks such as evaluation, classification of assets, etc., And this task can be done with the help of machines, automated machines. So human beings task is uh, not required. Human beings are not required for such task. Then the another task is analytics. So with the help of AI, we can identify the trends and we can uh, prepare some effective uh, models, effective recommendation, like how the students should choose for the courses, for the universities. And uh, along with that, personalized learning could be given to the students. In, uh, in, in the sense that every student is different. So what is the need of a particular student? According to that, this AI model will, will give recommendation in the form of personalized learning. So this smart education model, let me show you the diagram. This is the smart education model where learning analytics, uh, uh, intelligent tutor system, pedagogical agents, adaptive learning, all are in, uh, interconnected with each other. And there are... Uh, uh, four major parts of this model. First is the intelligent tutor model. It mimics the individual learning to, to help the teachers make the strategies. And it also helps the teachers to motivate the students in choosing their learning goals. Then is the pedagogical agents. And this is a virtual character. We must have seen in some of the websites a virtual character coming up, popping up in the form of smiley or in form of something. So this pedagogical uh, agent is going to be a kind of a which will help in terms of social and emotional aspect. And it will, it will uh, motivate the learners to, you know, kind of uh, communicating with the students. Then uh, the next portion of this model is the smart classroom and learning environment. Now here, the use of sensors, the embedded devices, the devices with technology will be used. So these devices will collect the data and will transmit the data. 
so the examples are microphones cameras motion sensors so we are already using some kind of devices into current education system but it could be improved the motive is to observe the facial expression body posture and hand movements of the teachers and students to identify if the classroom needs any kind of improvisation the last section of this model is learning analytics and adaptive learning so here the algorithm could be used algorithms could be developed to determine to prepare the pattern and then to give presentation to the teachers and to the students so these algorithms can be used to focus on the behavior achievement and learning preferences of the students uh, the objectives of my research are i'll simply read on the objectives that i have worked on to observe and study the impact of ai on education to access the future use and prospect of artificial intelligence in the field of teaching and learning process then to find out the evolution or uh, evolution of ai how it is getting improved into education system and how it can be implemented in the form of an ai model then uh, the next objective is to formulate the role of ai in administration task now this is something new that ai should be a part Uh, should should help the administrative part also because administration is some one of the most important field into this education system so uh, the uh, the next objective is to explore and explain the actual effects of ai on the learners and in on the whole education system methodology that i have used here is this research paper is just an exploratory research so uh, studies based on online survey google form was uh, the Hema instrument hema ma'am yes. please uh, yes. like share your research outcome okay uh, bengda ma'am uh, you're not audible could you please repeat i request you to share some uh, like uh, points related to your research outcome hello yes yes ma'am so the research methodology yes as as you have already told that the the, the tools uh, that has been used in this research was that uh, over the google form the survey was done uh, on 79 participants and uh, this was imported to max tuda for quantitative analysis and uh, that i will uh, straightly jump on the conclusion that the use of humanoid ro robots embedded systems have made the teaching process more effective and therefore the smart ai model is proposed in in my research paper for the education system and the aim is to improve or make the education instructional quality richer and for this the students uh, should be provided with such learning experience uh, so that they get a customized and personalized syllabus and course and methods the predictive modeling and pattern discovery with the help of data mining and artificial intelligence uh, using data machine learning in everything is a major uh, highlight of this research paper it is used to discover the data that is hidden and uh, the motive is to extract the hidden knowledge leading which could lead the instructors to adjust their curriculum and their teaching method to uh, improve it more so uh, this is it that i have a uh, prepared i hope megna ma'am i'm yes yes ma'am ma yes thank you so much ma'am i'm done with my presentation okay okay thanks for uh, sharing such a wonderful information related to artificial intelligence and uh, now i would love to call uh, professor anantraj manoj and he will be speaking and sharing his uh, research work on a brief study on application and future scope of digital image processing manoj sir yes ma'am what do you mean is my screen visible yes uh, thank you very much meghna ma'am uh, very good afternoon to all the dignitaries uh, who are present in this session and i am very happy to be a part of this international conference and uh, my paper is my paper is on the brief study on applications and the future scope of digital image policy so will it let us go into the introduction of this uh, a brief introduction the digital image processing means processing digital image by means of digital content so we all knew that the, now that era is about digitization 
and everything which is analog, uh, which is in our hand, hard copies have been converted to digital forms. Now, these digital form images, which have been converted, need to be processed so that we can save it for the future, future generations. This can be accomplished by the help of some few techniques uh, of a digital image processing and through digital computers. If you go a little bit history, the, the lots of digital image processing techniques were been uh, developed in the era of uh, in the years of 1960s. Uh, as, as we know that the computer era is about 1950s and all. So immediately after the after computer has been uh, computers have been introduced, and uh, the digital image processing are also is also been adopted in 1960s. And the first fruitful application we can say uh, about the American Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which they have processed by the image and by space detector range seven, uh, which the satellites taken the images of the moon. And they have processed the images, and this which makes it fruitful. They use the techniques like geometrical corrections, gradation transformations, noise action, and so on. Later, uh, since the, uh, the first experiment has been successful, they, they continued the experiments with more complex image processing techniques. And it was carried about one lakh images, which is sent by the code. After they have done, such type of image processing uh, techniques uh, on, the, on such images, the, it yielded a topographical map and color map and overall mosaic of the moon. Now, what we got from the one lakh images is about overall structure, how the moon looks like, and how what are the peaks are there, what are the valleys are there, what genes are there on the moon. Uh, everything is being yielded out of the image processing techniques, and which makes the result that the first human landed on the moon. And we can understand with this, with this point that how important, how great uh, the role of digital image processing in, in this particular era. And if we continue, uh, let me continue with this, this small information regarding the digital image processing and the different stages we follow and also about how the images will be represented. On the left side, the diagram shows about the different types of stages. Initially, the problem domain will be taken from where the actual source is. And after from the source, the image will be acquired. The image acquisition will be done with the help of some other tools, like you can say cameras also is one of the tools for the image acquisition. After the image acquisition is done, and it's also one of the important stages, the image enhancement is done. So normal image after the acquisition, uh, the enhancement tools will be there, algorithms will be applied on it so that it will, it will be visibly good. And after some time, after the next, after that stage, uh, there might be some noises ex that exist in the images. So the noises can be removed with the help of image restoration techniques. And to know the outer outlines of the images or thinning of the lines of the images, uh, we will use the morphological processing techniques. Then, if you want to divide or if you want to segment the images into different different various parts, basing on our purposes, we can use segmentation techniques. Finally, it will be represented described according to our purpose. As we have seen previously in the in one of the uh, presenter uh, speaker, who mentioned guest speaker, Saumi, Dr. Saumi Gutatta, and she explained about the uh, the medical images, medical digital image processing. Uh, about the breast cancer, where the cancer can be identified based on some rules using the techniques of fuzzy logics. So that particular image can be identified, segmented first, and later it can be restored and, and can be done. Some uh, applying some algorithms, we can extract, we can extract the results. So not all, not does mean uh, this particular uh, process doesn't mean that we have to go through each and every steps compulsorily. Sometimes we can go only for a time. After image acquisition, we can just enhance and restore the images that finish our job. Sometimes we go for segmentation and later come back for the restoration. Depends upon the, uh, the query which we have. And come on to the right side of my screen, the presentation slide. And this is how the digital image, the digital image will be represented in computer. But the digital image can be defined as a two-dimensional function, f of x comma y, where x and y are the spatial coordinates and the amplitude of f at any at any pair of coordinates with any values of the x and y 
which we called as intensity of that image at that particular point. The particular point is called as a pixel. I, I know. I hope everybody knows about the pixels on the image. The pixels is nothing but the smallest component of an image, which can cannot be divided further. So uh, this particular pixel will be represented by a perfect comma away in that particular point, with having some intensity in it. And if x and y values and the amplitude values of f, these three values are at finite, then we can call it as a digital image because we knew that the image will not have will not change. Uh, any colors. For suppose, if we see red color in an image, that it will be. If we are following a, a color pattern like uh, RGB, then if it is a red color pixel is there, that it means it is having the values of 255 comma 0 comma 0. That means there is a finite value in it. Right. Let us continue uh, for the next slide. And what is the future scope of digital image processing in this? The digital image processing, image processing techniques extracts the information from the image and integrates it for a wide range of applications. We know many type, many applications have been, uh, are using digital image processing techniques. Let us see from, I have taken very few examples. Here, uh, first one we take about irrigation, monitoring and delivering information by tracking satellite images on the field. So we, uh, we can see on the image also, so what are the basing on the colors and the color bifurcations and we can understand which fields are having productivity and which are fields are there and which are related to commercial and this information can be acquired with the help of digital image person and also if you come for the medicine uh, uh, in the medical sector so uh, the 3d imaging and rendering the latest techniques you can see uh, which were not in, in the previous uh, previous days and which has been recently developed, which helps the doctors to understand uh, the structure of the organs, which, which he cannot do every time. You know, he can take the 3D rendering images and he can understand what are the things, what are the uh, deep down details inside the each and every organs and make the surgeries which are accurate at most. And if you take the other example, that we are using the digital maze processing with the help of drone drones, and for the environment, for monitoring environment and other traffic conditions also. For example, if somebody has VIP is coming on the way, so with the help of drones, uh, the help of the digital image policy, it is easy to monitor the, the traffic also. And we can see the other example like natural calamities. In case of natural calamities, floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, and all these things can be understood previously before it has been struck. And uh, and also sometimes uh, tsunami, which is inevitable, inevitable. So it, it has been done. So in such cases, we can also, with the help of digital image processing, we are able to identify the affected areas so that the affected areas will get the rescue team as quick as possible. And I just I will conclude the I will conclude my presentation with this slide. The digital image processing can be more into security functions and surveillance missions. We are we are. Uh, are into security, we are, are into surveillance uh, processing uh, with the help of digital image processing. But it should be even more because uh, we knew that artificial intelligence has been integral part. Now it became into part of digital image processing. Now we are using the image processing algorithms along with the AI techniques. Last year, as I specified, the fuzzy logic is also one of the uh, components we can see in the, like a sister con concept of AI. Uh, various new types of processing systems came into existence in the areas of chemical, thermal, and molecular image, imaging that can be developed. And we have recently seen the the, the devastation that is happening. Manu, the, sir, the, the, yes. Manu, sir, please uh, share your uh, conclusion with us. Yes, ma'am. I'm I'm sharing the conclusion. I'll conclude then. I'll conclude. Yes, please proceed. Yeah, we have seen the corona time and we have seen the doctors how they have identified the structure of the virus and how the spikes were there and all these things. This actually this is also one of the applications done through one of the means uh this is one of the applications for that. And finally, conclude with the point the satellites have been used regularly recently. Many private sectors also entered into the space technology. In this in this scenario, you know, in the in the military applications and the safe space satellite imaging, uh, even more can be done. Uh, to the digital image processing, 
with the help of AI and other means of techniques. With this, I conclude and thank you very much for giving this opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Speak then I would share my PPT, right? Okay, please okay. share your uh, research work. Uh, research paper share. it is already sent. Share your, your share your content in a nutshell. Okay. Request you to share your content in a nutshell. Right, right. Okay, wait, wait a minute. Matthew, um, it with Matthew, sir, I want to make a how to share, how to share, yes, I can drive me heavy. Hello, Swati ma'am. I think you find some difficulty. No problem. Take your time. Uh, meanwhile, I just want to call some other, if you allow me. Shall I call some? No, no. Uh, I... Yes. Can I uh, my... Meghna, madam. Okay. Your present, uh... Yes, go ahead, please. Anna, I, I just love to uh, call uh, Nash Yadav. Sir, are you there? Yes, madam. Are you ready? Yes, madam. Please start your presentation. Okay, madam. Madam. Just a minute, ma'am. Madam, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my topic is incorporating yoga into healthcare system in India. Mental health care is a right of every individual in India. And Indian mental health legislation is doing everything to make sure that the majority of India's population remains mentally healthy. But it is also notice noticeable that the healthcare professional and economic resources to cater for the need of mental health issue in India is far from satisfactory. Around 0.16% of the national health care budget is allocated to mental health. The burden of mental health problem in India is estimated to be 2,443 daily per 1 lakh population, according to a study published in Launcent in 2019, one in seven Indians were affected by mental disorder of varying severity in 2017. Substantial variation exists between states in the burden from different mental disorders and in their trend over time. So apart from the individualistic perspective, the economic burden of mental health on the Indian 
exchequer also need to be considered hello avinash sir you are not audible avinash sir can you hear me hello Abhinash sir, can you hear me? I think he is facing some network problem. Avinash sir, are you there? Madhvi ma'am? Sati ma'am is ready? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry sir, Avinash sir? Yes, Meghna ma'am. प्रेजेंट करूंगा सर Abhinash sir, thank you so much for the presentation. And I would like to call Sati Sehwani for her presentation. I think she has actually shared the screen. Sati, over to you. You can proceed with the presentation. Hi. Sati, ma'am, please start your presentation. Yes, yes, I'm coming. Wait. Keep open the same task. Yeah, this is already done. So this means we keep cutting. You can start. Okay. Okay. Yes, you can. 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 हेलो यस यस Thank you. 
Can you share uh, your content? The PPT is not working with the problem. Can you share your content? Ma'am, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Can I, can I share? Can, can I yes. present? Yes, ma'am. Please share your content. Okay. I need to share the PPT. Yeah, yeah uh, sure. I will complete in time. Okay. Uh, some uh, greetings to everyone. My topic is sustainable entrepreneurship and innovation. So entrepreneurship, innovation and sustainable development is a subject of great interest nowadays as society is looking for solution leading to sustainable development. Entrepreneurship is considered a central force of economic development as it generates growth and serves a vehicle for innovation and change. So, uh, so development refers to you know, the use of natural resources efficiently without wasting and reserving for future generation. Similarly, entrepreneurship refers to the process of creating new, new future generation. Entrepreneurship refers to the process of creating a new enterprise and bearing any express with the view of making profit. Sustainable entrepreneurship refers to the discovery, creation and exploitation of entrepreneurial opportunities that contribute to sustainability by generating social and environmental gains for the for other in society. So, these definitions indicate three attributes of sustainable entrepreneurship relating to the integration of environmental and social problems with economic benefits, creating new values and innovations, transforming companies, sectors and economic towards a sustainable development with the attributes in mind. Sustainable entrepreneurship means a kind of business activity that creates new opportunities for development of innovation, innovative activities or enterprises based on ecological so, development is a concept that is gaining popularity as a new trend of social economic development around the world. Sustainable entrepreneurship as a new type of business opportunity represents a unique perspective that combines the creation of economic, social and environmental values with particular emphasis on well-being of future generations. So, uh, so given the assumption that innovation is a key future of sustainable entrepreneurship, it can just uh, stated that innovation, innovative activity plays an important role in process of transformation towards the sustainable development of enterprise, thus building the competitive advantages for them. As a result, the innovative activities enterprise achieve social, environmental and economical benefits. So, to conclude, uh, the increasing pace of environmental and technological changes has a significant impact on organizations, including enterprises. It's today's dynamic and uh, uncertain economic environment. Companies and organizations are trying to find new ways of achieving their strategic goals and ensuring long-term success. The uh, current state of development shows that there are many opportunities for a synergy between uh, sustainable development and entrepreneurship. So, last in the, uh, this is the last point. The key future of sustainable entrepreneurship is not only solving an, uh, environmental and social problems and achieving economic benefits, but also creating new values and innovations and transforming companies, sectors, and economics towards the sustainable development. Thank you so much, ma'am.
Chetna ma'am, thank you so much for your very uh, effective presentation. And uh, moving ahead, I would like to call uh, Madhvi ma'am, Professor Madhvi Tarani ma'am from St. Paul Institute of Professional Studies. Madhvi ma'am, are you ready? Uh, yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Over to you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Ma'am, just a minute. I'm just sharing this screen. Uh, Mingna, ma'am, if you can please confirm whether my PPT presentation is visible. Yes, yes, it is absolutely visible, ma'am. Please okay. proceed. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, once again, a very, very, very good afternoon to uh, Director Reverend Father Simon Rush, our principal, Dr. Sister Alice Thomas, and to all the dear faculty members. So, here I'm going to present my paper on a review study to analyze the impacts of technological gadgets and services. So, First of all, let me start with the purpose of the study, why we have chosen the particular topic. So as we can see, the purpose of the study was mainly the two purposes were there. Firstly, to create this technological awareness, and the second one was the impact analysis. Because as far as the technology is concerned, it's, it's very, uh, like nowadays it's been considered an indispensable part of our life today. We cannot even, even imagine with the, you know, the day without the technology. So what are the benefits? What are the harmful consequences of this technological gadgets and services that we want to create awareness about that? And then secondly, the study highlights the positive, negative, and the overall impact of the gadgets and services on the health and lifestyles. When it comes to the health and lifestyles, we can know how important it is. So what kind of uh, comprehensive, the consolidated effect we are going to have with the excessive use of the technological gadgets and services. So, as I said, that technology today, as we have considered it as a uh, very, very, very important part of anybody's life. And without that, we are feeling a completely isolated and inaccessible world. Even with a day without a technology, it's like we are not going to do anything with that. Right? So, here, the problem statement that we have observed is, compared to the developed countries, few studies are undertaken in the developing nations, such as India, and even fewer studies are conducted in the metro cities. And the majority of the studies are concerned on the onset and the impact of the technological addiction. But the less studies we have found out on the motivations behind it. Why we people are getting addicted to the technological gadgets and services. Because as far as gadgets and services are concerned, that is that are having a very good and the fruitful effects. But that's true up to some extent, up to some limits. Beyond limit, if you are going to have the you know the usage, then definitely. It can be very detrimental to our health and lifestyle, right? And apart from that, the majority uh, of the studies you skip the the important or I would say the significant part of the society and that of the youth. So we have tried to cover all things over here, right? Here the research methodology. If I talk about this, is completely the secondary data-based research paper. The extent literature by the various researchers. Worldwide, we have used a literature uh, that was uh, that was uh, that was available to us with the help of uh, Google and with the help of all the literature, uh, sorry, library literature that we, that was available to us. And the research is completely qualitative in nature. Here, as we can see, uh, that paper is all about the impacts of the technology. So we have divided the impacts of the technology is the positive impacts of the technology and the negative impacts of the technology and the various literatures available to us we have referred to that as you can see the first one is the texa and the janikin that is under in the 2013 we referred the paper and the, mainly the main aspect that was highlighted in the paper was a greater access and the connectivity so the great access and the use of internet allow people to all the ages to quickly share their current interests with others across the world and as a result the global interconnection is fastly increasing so as we are discussing the positive impacts of course very easily very quickly within no time you can connect with the people so the interconnection is very 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 fast very rapid the second one is as we can see the better learning for the kids and the paper given by Samson in 2010 the main focus was on the employment of the digital gadgets in the classrooms they have really, really, really a positive impact on the mind of the students and they are learning very, very, very fast. 
The third, as you can see, developing the multitasking skills that is given by the author Nas and the Wagner in 2009. Yes, of course, as far as the technological gadgets and services are concerned, we can develop the multitasking skill, right? It's not just about because uh, just working on the one uh, thing or one activity. At, at the same time, we are working on the number of activities we are just working also, and we are just looking to the other important things as well. So the cognitive process, if I talk about this, is really going to be very, very, very high, very good as far as the impact of the technological gadgets that is. Lastly, as we can see, this selling and harbor in 2002 as the beneficial in the health and medicine. This paper was specially uh, uh, was written with reference to the medicos, and uh, selling and harbor has they have emphasized that. This medical setting under the technological, uh, sorry, technological gadgets under the medical settings can be very, very, very helpful to all the doctors and the, all the medicals because as soon as you need the information, very soon, within more time, you can have the information and you can uh, let the information be known to the people as well so that accordingly all the services, all the medicines, all the further proceedings can be taken within time, right? Now, the next part of the uh, our paper, as we can see, is the negative impacts of the technology. So as we see along, uh, again, the, uh, the different papers were referred for that. The negative impacts that I talk about, the first one is by the carbon, 2011, right? The social media addiction. As we all know that uh, when it comes to the internet, when it comes to the technological gadgets and services, a very, very, very dangerous addiction that the today's youth have, and that is the social media addiction. Up to some level, for some of the points, they are very, very, very fruitful. But as I said, it goes beyond the limit. Definitely, it can become the addiction. And in the future, also, that can be very detrimental to our health, eyes, and our lifestyle as well, right? Then, depression among the youth. The second one, has been, as we can see, is given by the cotton in 2001, right? No doubt. As far as the gadgets and services are concerned, they are very good. But up to some level, that is also creating the depression among the youth. Because many times they are just creating the use so much all the day, all night. They are keep themselves engaged. They people keep themselves engaged in such kind of usage. So ultimately, at the end of the day, it can create some kind of depression as well. Psychiatric problems, the overall development of the growth of the children, many of the problems as we can see that can be that can be there as a negative impacts of the technology. Here, uh, if I just going to be on the neutral side and the neutral side, and as I can see, the technology, you know, they can it, it can have both the positive and negative impacts. Now it's up to us that in which way we are going to use the technology, right? It can, of course, if firstly if I talk about it, it can have a day-to-day -day dependency. Definitely, as we all know that we, without the technology, we cannot imagine our day, right? So the very great dependency we have as far as the gadgets and services are concerned. But that too. That too, okay. apart from the negative side, if I talk about the again the positive side, many of the problems have been solved and many of the solutions we have with the help of this technology. So all the things is every coin has a two side, right? So likewise, the technological gadgets and services also have the two side. It's up to us and how we are going to use it, right? We have to have the balance. We have to have the neutral side so that we cannot, you know, we cannot be dependent on that even, and we can be, you know, we can save ourselves from the negative side as well. And as I say that here, the impact of the technological uh, gadgets on health and lifestyles, it, it's also going to be have a very, very uh, good topic to be discussed over here. As we can see the two papers over here, the Professor Phil Reed in 2013 and Dr. Kimberly Young in 1995. They have uh, just presented these papers on this particular topic and they have talked about the health and lifestyle, right? As we can see, they increase the online addiction to drug or the alcohol addictions. Here, Dr. Kimberly Young has equated this addiction with, uh, like, with similar as like the addiction that we have, the drug addiction or the alcohol addiction. So we can understand how negative it can be in our lives if you are not going to have a control on it. Right? Finally, let me conclude with my presentation. So finally, if I talk about the technology, it has, the usage has grown really, really, very, very fast. And the positive impacts are very much like the investigative skills, strategic thinking, creativity potentials are very good positive impacts that we can see. But along with that, of course, as I, if I talk about the ne negative impacts, that are the weakening the real world practical skills, living in a fantasy world, avoiding the outdoor activities are very uh, like the, you know, the big negative consequences that we can see. And we can work on that. We can let them show 
the real mirror, the real picture that in which direction they are going so that they can come to know that it's not good to have such a big usage of the technological gadgets and services, right? And lastly, if I talk about the future perspective, definitely India is on the way to make it digital India. So even nowadays also, although it has a very negative impact as well, but nowadays also we would find the uh, various villages or the various areas where, you know, the, you know, like the internet or the technological gadget is still, still, still like a dream, right? So if I talk about this digital India, definitely with all the governments, with the help of all the suppliers, we can think about this and we can extend this positive side, we can extend this benefit to the underprivileged areas so that at least we can become a helping hand to the dream of digital India. Here I conclude my presentation. Thank you so much, Thank you so much, Madhvi ma'am, for this wonderful presentation. And uh, moving ahead, I would like to call Swati, uh, Dr. Swati Singh, ma'am. And uh, Swati, ma'am, uh, here I request you to please share your summary of your research. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm audible. Audible, visible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, absolutely. Thank okay. you. Uh, due to some technical errors, I cannot uh, present my summary, so I'm just uh, sharing my thoughts. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Research Foundation of um, um, India that Tarify that uh, they have given opportunity me to share my thoughts on this very beautiful topic that is most debatable top topic nowadays. So I have taken the Topic is that is nature's voice pathway to a resilient society by with a special reference to the world is too much with us by William Wordsworth. There are different challenges, opportunities, and innovations in India. Degrading air quality index, rampant environmental degradation, loss of biodiversity, urbanization, along with many opportunities and innovations. But the biggest question is why the discussion on sustainable future? Because the misinterpretation, misconception, and illusion about the development. Now it is the time to revisit the meaning of development. The recent pandemic has broken up the myth of advancedness and developed life when we were paralyzed in front of a tiny virus. While acknowledging humanity's unique ability to create art and literature and pursue scientific endeavors that have put our species into our outer space, we have to change our notion that we have capacity to change the world around us. And now we have to accept that if we are still in this illusion, one day we will lead to our own life into downfall. So now we have to equip ourselves with knowledge, use our creativity and innovation to turn away from short-sightedness and take actions towards a sustainable future. We have to have practice of subsistence rather than commercialization. The realization that the earth does not belong to human beings. Human beings belong to the earth along with other beings. That is why they say, ye prathvi unki bhi hai, ye dunya hamari bhi hai. Man cannot grow the plant. He cannot create the nature. Rather, nature supports living beings, says Tina Morris. So this is the time for change and start by valuing and natural planet. Since long back, many intellectuals have been raising their voice from different corners for saving the earth and Wordsworth, William Wordsworth was one of them, who like other romantic poets viewed the industrial revolution as an ugly movement. He showed his revolt against industrialization through his different poems especially the world is too much with us. Here he is trying to urge mankind to stop their destruction. In fact, many say that the earth would, would be 
better off without human being as he is the only culprit who has destroyed the earth and only species suffered in corona time the poet argues that people have forsaken their souls for materialistic gain in fact the whole text of the poem denounces materialism which the poet has seen around him in 17th century and now it is still very much relevant each and every thought which is mentioned in this sonnet by william wordsworth he believes that we have given our hearts the corner of ourselves away in the exchange for money and materialistic wealth so along with the author wordsworth i would like to conclude with this idea that it is too much with us means we care for too much about worldly things he gives more depth of thought to this idea when he suggests that by using our time minds and energy in getting and spending that we lay waste our past wordsworth criticizes the world of first revolution industrial revolution for being absorbed in materialism and distancing itself from nature but at the same time someone has beautifully said that humans are problem but solution as well so we have to take out solution we have to change the notion that we are living in a developed society after damaging the nature so we have to make compatibility between nature and human beings then only we actually elevate our standard of living thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you sati ma'am uh, for your uh, critical appreciation and a good relation uh, with the futuristic analytical mindset so we are really pleased to hear you and now i would like to call matthew sir professor matthew md yes matthew sir good afternoon uh, yes good afternoon. to you matthew sir thank okay, you let me share the screen yes sir i think it's visible to all yes sir so good afternoon my topic for today's presentation is role of lifestyle management in a healthy life so we know as we all know that yes our lifestyle play the key role uh, in our health as well so the time we have come okay we need to do a chronological analysis uh, of the health and how it has changed throughout the time so i have i'm here to just give uh, our lifestyle and how it is affected you know that our lifestyle when we speak about the lifestyle uh, you know uh, it is consists of first of food habit because food clothes shelter these are the basic necessities of human life so the food uh, the food we eat the cloth we wear the shelter we live even the ventilation of our house uh, our sleeping pattern a way of work all this affect our health so uh, we know that this is of paramount important because uh, the changing lifestyle most of the time affect any of these factors and most of the time all of these factors so i am uh, dealing with the factors which affect so you know that throughout the world history we see there was a great transition during the time of uh, every revolution you uh, as i heard the agrarian period agri agriculture brought a social life agriculture brought a settlement in human life and agrarian society uh, went through a drastic change during the time of industrialization so industrialization further boosted the growth of technology and uh, there is a drastic change from agrarian society to industrial and technical society it happened in 14th and 15th century in europe first uh, slowly and gradually it came to india uh, by colonialization the change was drastic and uh, now we are living in a globalized society 
and change is seen everywhere. Now, this transition, this change from agrarian society to industrial or technical society brought a lot of consequences. Uh, the traditional agrarian society was very and it was uh, in full. Hello, I hope. Yeah, so it was there was a tranquility in agrarian society and order, and this order was all of a sudden put ups and down. So, here, upside down. Then coming to the chaos in health, it again affected our health. As I told you, the basic aspects of life was changed due to this transition and development of modern medicine. So we were uh, very much dependent on the traditional kind of medicine. And now from traditional medicine to we are more familiar with the uh, modern kind of maybe allopathic or English medicine, we call it. Then we see the next transition decline of traditional health system. Earlier, we used to depend more on a traditional health system like Ayurveda, Yunani, or any sort of herbal medicine. But now, uh, hardly people follow such things and uh, people uh, have very different attitude towards uh, this traditional sort of medicine, though uh, there is a sign of change. Now, let's see what are the traditional medicine and health. You know that there are many sort of traditional health, like the familiar things we...
was allocated to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. These are some opportunities provided by the government to the healthcare services. We need we, at the COVID time, we have already observed the importance of healthcare services. But there are some challenges also that, that the healthcare services the hand, hand study in industries face. First of the population. India's second largest population in the world. Population starts, uh, population statistics says that the current population of India is at 1.36 billion as of, uh, as of July 2019. India is, as it seems, but the rate of growth of population is not the same as the rate of growth of the health sector. So we need to work upon the population. Second, infrastructure. The infrastructure offered by the India's healthcare sector is not enough for masses. The doctor to patient ratio is, uh, ratio is at 1 is to 1700. As compared to highest populated country in the world, China, India pays poorly in this aspect. Third challenge, insurance. India's contribution to the per capita healthcare expenditure is extremely low. The government of India contributes only 32 percent to insurance which is very less as compared to other country so we need to think in this sector also we need to uh, uh, spread awareness about the health insurance in the public for rural urban disparity india's rural population had 70 percent of the total population of india but the healthcare statistics do not match up to this number Good doctors and experts can be found in the urban areas, but a person from a rural area often cannot afford to come to an urban area for treatment. Malpractices. When there is a huge shortlist or huge shortage of healthcare professional and there is a large population to treat, malpractices arises. There have been cases where counterfoil medicines have been produced and sold to unsuspecting individuals. There are no proper regulation in place to ensure such mal uh, practices to India. Sick lack of accountability for quality of care. If any cases happen, so no one is ready to take accountability to uh, for other losses that we bear. Next, there are some suggestions that I reviewed the uh, many of the papers and then I uh, uh, found some suggestion for sustainable future of healthcare uh, uh, services in India. The government needs to improve availability, equity, and equality of healthcare services as well as basic care of the poor. Government should encourage social health insurance on low cost so that everyone is capable to buy the uh, insurance. The government should set up standards for hospital and health centers at various levels. Under that standards, they need to work. The corporate sector should continue to play an active role in building health system to improve the delivery of health services that we can say the CSR corporate social responsibility. Non-governmental and non-profit sectors should work closely with the government to ensure better access to health services by the poor. Medical education should include new areas of clinical practices and the response to the rapidly changing health scenario in the country. Next, conclusion. While considerable progress has been there, there uh, progress has been made in improving the health of the Indian population. The current status still portrays a grim picture. Although we are very active and we are very uh, facilitated in our healthcare sector, but still work is needed. The responsibility of the government to provide primary healthcare is a part of a larger goal to create equal society to direct the principle of the Constitution of India. New ways of our establishing, strengthening, and sustaining the private public cooperation are essential for the system. With the increasing population and the growth of middle income group, the access of medical services has gained prime importance. With several initiatives taken by the government to address the infrastructure requirement, the need for technology solution has grown rapidly. Means, uh, if I say in two or three words, so we need to work on our healthcare facilities, we need to improve our infrastructure. We need to improve our healthcare uh, 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 insurance policy. So the, after that, we can achieve the top of the economic on the India. Thank you, ma'am. This is for my side. Gagan sir, thank you so much for your presentation. And now I thank would like to request uh, Dr. Goldi Zaki, uh, Goldi ma'am, uh, for the presentation. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
Jyoti ma'am, after Goldie ma'am, you please come and give your presentation. Jyoti ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Jyoti ma'am. Ma'am, is my screen visible? No, ma'am. Just a moment. Now it is working. Again, some problem is there, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, some trouble network issues there. Okay. Ma'am, please continue with someone else. Meanwhile, I'll just okay. solve my network issue. Sure, sure. No problem, ma'am. Jyoti, ma'am. Are you ready, ma'am? Jyoti, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Meghna, ma'am. Yes. And please. now I'm sharing my screen. Okay, ma'am. No problem. Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Yes, good afternoon to all. Uh, under the International Conference on Challenges, Opportunities, and Innovation for Sustainable Future, my topic is Impact and Significance of Digital Payment in India. So first of all, I introduce the Digital India, what right now at, uh, we are facing. The Digital India program is a pioneer scheme of the government of India with a vision to transform India into a digitally engaged society and information economy. One of Digital India's apparent function is anonymous, paperless, and credit transactions only. To encourage the transition to a credit economy only, the government has imposed a slew of restrictions and give a ways on digital exchanges. Hence, it gives innovation and sustainable future. So under this uh, research, some of the objectives are to learn about people's attitude towards digital payments in India, to learn about the difficulties people have in making digital transfers, to determine the most popular digital payment method, to know an idea regarding the expected future of digital payments in India, to check whether our residents have benefited from the cashless facility, to study about India will eventually become a credit-only economy, to analyze the effects of the digital payment system in India, and to come comprehend the repercussions of the digital system. So this research will be done on the base of secondary data. And uh, in this, my findings are like first is the government's and RBI's payments framework activities have resulted in increased recognition and deeper penetration of non-cash payment modes continuously improving innovation and media transmission offices have given a boost to the elective electronic installment framework. Checks have outlived their usefulness and will continue to exist in the medium term. Government actions such as the introduction of GST and demonetizations are likely to broaden the expense net and expand the conventional economy. So some of the suggestions I also propose that the government needs to get a simple and predictive e-payment framework techniques used by the government and RBI to support credit-only transactions by authorizing installment banks and advancing portable wallets. As part of the government's Make in India initiative, rupee cards and Aadhaar-based payments framework should be prioritized. The government should impose an assistance charge on credit cards and advance payments. Measures to limit money used by imposing fees on cash withdrawals that exceed a certain 
threshold. The government should periodically direct a monetary education mission to make the populace aware of the benefits of electronic payments. In order to improve monetary incorporation, business journalists, e-seva kendras, and so on may be permitted to make miniature receipts and payments exchanges utilizing Aadhaar confirmation. So at last, my conclusion is that computerized installments helps India in all areas by providing financial security and well-being as well as propelling the way of life by appropriating the most recent advancement for globalization and modernization of our nation, which prompts the turn of events. As a result, Indian culture should also assist the government in obtaining these frameworks and strategies for our country's advancement and development. Indeed, gradual and step-by-step -step change is taking place, but the length of time it will take is unknown at this time. Given that the country's innovation and advancement installment market has only recently begun. So this is my research on that. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Jyoti ma'am, for your well within uh, time presentation. And now uh, I hope Goldie ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. I would like to call, call to Goldie ma'am for the presentation. Jyoti ma'am, if you could please stop sharing. Thank you so much. Yeah, is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Now it is visible. Yes. Uh, so, good afternoon to all. I am Dr. Goldie Zanin from St. Paul Institute of Professional Studies. And the topic that I have taken is e-bikes, contribution to environmental sustainability, a study with reference to contemporary challenges. So, this is what I will be covering in my presentation. So, starting with the introduction. Uh, going on briefly, electrical bicycles are actually very similar to regular bicycles, but with an electric motor. And that is what differentiates electric bikes from the other bikes. And uh, the basic problem that the world is facing as at present is global environmental uh, challenges like impact on climate challenges, loss of biodiversity, overuse of natural resources, and down the line somewhere the use of fossil fuels, which are non-renewable. That's the main uh, problem which is creating uh, so many pollution-related issues. And then uh, there arises the need for e-bikes. So if we go into uh, the reasons, we see that they are faster than the regular bikes. They're not more dangerous. They are safer. They add extra vigor that's needed to cover the uh, miles. They are multi-purpose cycle lane, can be used if you're on an electronic bike. And then uh, it has become more popular in the cities. And the government is also urging the people to go in for the e-bikes. And then uh, with the increasing number of bike lanes, being uh, printed on the major roadways as we find in most of the metropolitan cities the e-bikes is a better option so there are few benefits of e-bike so combining the benefits of electric plus the benefit of cycling we have improved physical health it's easier to ride better mental health greater uh, alternative to cars faster and safe. So on one hand, we see that e-bikes would contribute uh, to fight the environmental challenges. And on the other hand, the ban benefit is also for the uh, physical health of the people. Now, these are the top companies in India who are selling the e-bikes. Uh, it has been headed by e uh, Hero Electric, followed by other uh, companies as well. And these are the sales figure. And uh, the figure shows that uh, during the years uh, for the financial year 2021, as compared to financial year 2022, there has been difference. And this difference has been positive for most of the companies. 
and uh, then coming to the challenges naturally uh, anything that has been introduced is not free of challenges so there are inadequate charging infrastructure high price of electric bikes range of electric bikes that's available is yet another challenge then customers to scooters over e bikes since the average price of an e bike in india is same as a basic scooter so when we talk about the pricing and infrastructure that's the basic challenge that is being faced but then yes uh, the india has a good prospect as far as e bike is concerned so we see that the e bike uh, market in india was valued to us dollar 1.14 million in 2021 and then uh, in recent year there has been rise in the demand for e bikes in india then the growing customer demand for electric bike for recreational and adventurous activities uh, as a relaxation exercise the use of e bikes and other sectors such as logistics and rentals are propelling the electric bike market in india forward then country's large population along with improving last mile logistics is predicted to provide the e bike market a boost throughout the forecast period and uh, coming to the conclusion uh, the demand for e bike in tier 1 cities is fast growing with sales in india growing at a double digit yearly pace over the previous several years now e bikes have been increasingly becoming popular in the metropolitan cities and uh, the companies are trying to provide with the emi alternatives uh, so that the people in the other second tier cities also going for this particular option so that's all from my side thank you thank you goldie ma'am for sharing very useful and comparative study related to e bikes it was really a pleasure listening to you ma'am and now i would like to call professor rahat ahmed rahat sir yes madam i am ready okay sir thank you sir. over to you sir okay is my screen visible yes sir okay so good afternoon to all the great scholars of the third international conference held at st paul institute of professional studies so today's topic what i have chosen is challenges and opportunities in healthcare and well being before i start with the topic i would like to tell that in today's scenario people are least bothered about health they are more bothered about wealth it is rightly said health is wealth in today's scenario people believe that everything is wealth so oh, so let us see the introduction of the topic the difference of health and well being health is a state of complete physical mental and social well being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity people go along with their life but they have little bit of seriousness they ignore it and this little bit seriousness turns into something else later on a resource for mundane life not the objective of living what is well being it is being defined as the state of being comfortable healthy or happy however it is important to realize that well being is a much broader concept than moment to moment happiness again i would like to share that in today's scenario people are very happy but have we ever thought that they are contented are they satisfied or not happiness is seen but are they really happy are they really satisfied with the life that's a big question mark for all of us again what are the types of well being could be physical well being economic well being social well being development and activity emotional well being psychological well being life satisfaction as i just shared you are happy in your own way you could be the happiest person on the earth but are you satisfied that is what i had shared before also we all are very good in our own way are we psychologically fit are we emotionally fit we are growing day by day our growth development is there 
in which direction we are moving is it proper or not if not then let us see the mental illness amplifies the risk or lethality of physical health problems mentally ill people are more likely to develop tobacco alcohol and substance abuse addictions mentally ill people also experience high levels of stress from the loss of jobs marriages and families and this we see in every day's life conversely a poor quality life often experienced by those with severe mental health difficulties was characterized by feelings of distress lack of control choice and autonomy low self esteem and confidence a sense of not being part of society diminished activity and a sense of hopelessness and demoralization in today's scenario we all see that whether you belong to any age group they are getting little bit mentally disturbed two years of pandemic we have seen and how people have lost their health how people have become mentally physically ill and still people are trying to overcome it still how the stress strain comes over the people i would like to share few more points like relationships with superiors colleagues and subordinates have also been identified as potential stressors at the workplace studies have found that mistrust of co-workers is related to high role ambiguity poor communication low job satisfaction and poor psychological well-being strong emotions such as workplace jealousy and envy among employees have been blamed for pathological outcomes such as workplace violence and harassment if you have lost your balance psychologically physically also then these type of activities are going to take place in you you become little bit frustrated you start becoming short tempered person and slowly and gradually all negative things start happening with you and therefore i would like to suggest that at workplace also everybody should be with great patience and if you have patience i hope success will definitely come in a positive manner managing the link between work and home has apparently become an increasingly potential source of stress you are working in a company you are working in an institute sometimes the time gets exceeded and the people household members keep looking for you at home when they will be reaching and because of this lot of stress and other things happen role conflict was related to emotional exhaustion work family conflict was related to emotional exhaustion and job satisfaction and emotional exhaustion and job satisfaction well related last to the conclusion where a lot of stress strain takes place i just would like to quote and finish it up common sense is not a gift it's a punishment why because you have to deal with everyone who doesn't have it and therefore you have to break your head to make all those people understand it this is my simple topic i have dealt with you thank you very much for listening god bless all of us thank you uh, thank, thank you raj yes thank you so much raj sir uh, you conclude your uh, saying and your experiences well within the time thank you so much and now i would like to call professor garima jain ma'am garima ma'am Ready? Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Thank you, Meghna, yes. ma'am. Uh, I'm just presenting my screen. Okay. Please let me know whether it is visible or not. Yes. Is it visible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes, absolutely visible. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the management. Uh, director uh, sir uh, father and sister principal ravi sir for pr providing this opportunity to present the paper in international conference my topic is social intelligence a critical analysis it is a review paper so i'm first of all i'm introducing the topic that is social intelligence 
uh, basically it refers to the ability and capability to read other people and co uh, recognize their intentions and motivation it is basically the capacity to effectively negotiate complex social relationship and environment uh, we can understand this uh, the meaning of social intelligence by uh, uh, by simple words that the ability to understand and manage men and women boys and girls to act wisely in human relations so when we talk about human relations uh, one more term comes uh, uh, under the limelight that is emotional intelligence so social intelligence is very much closely related to cognition and social intelligence it is of more importance in the present lifestyle due to growing tension stress and various complexities it can be learned developed and used by an effective life skill for managing personal life interpersonal relationship and achieving success in all steps of life so for this i have done some reviews uh, first of all in two, uh, a study in 2007 conducted in which the social intelligence and aggression among senior secondary school students uh, has been compared in that study uh, findings are the social intelligence of senior secondary school student was of average aggression was a high uh, was high among senior secondary school students a social intelligence was have effective relationship with aggression of social uh, secondary senior secondary school, uh, school students gender based comparison of social intelligence was found to be significant and social intelligence based group different significantly in their aggression other study in 2009 was done in that uh, it was indicated that female students possesses more social intelligence than male students and analysis of stream indicated that the art students are having greater social intelligence than student of other stream the study in 2011 Uh, concluded that the social intelligence of high secondary student in relation to their socio economic status was more uh, 2014 study says that male students have better social intelligence in compared to female students and the same year one more study was conducted on social intelligence and it uh, it uh, in that study it has been examined the important social and academic outcome of high high school student and 2016 the study was conducted by uh, baba and in that he concluded that the study uh, says that the aggression and social intelligence are not significantly correlated means not affecting each other so uh, the findings ma and uh, sorry ma'am ma sorry to interrupt you but uh, please uh, come to the conclusion because we really yes, wish yes, to hear your conclusion part Thank yes ma'am just one more slide and then the conclusion the finding of the review says that uh, the research is conducted during last few decades highlight the fact that social intelligence had beneficial effect on individual for his or her success in life it the psychological benefit gained by understanding own uh, social era and personality structure brings in positive changes in relationship increase self esteem enhances the mental functioning and also bring social solution social problems thus ultimately lead to total development of personal identity and nature of any individual so finally the conclusion of my study uh, as per the uh, national Inter uh, international authors i have uh, reviewed according to that i have made this conclusion uh, the above study is also highlighted significant and noteworthy gender difference on sources of social intelligence academic stress and aggression as well as some moderator variables on the relationship between sources of academic stress and social outcome thus the review of the literature has been presented in accordance with the purpose of the study for which a specific methodology has been adopted which will be presented further thank you thank you for this opportunity okay garima ma'am over to meghna ma'am Uh, okay, Gary, ma'am. Ma thank you so much for listening to my request. Now, I would like to call uh, Dr. Dipali Gupta uh, for her presentation. Dipali, ma'am, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. My screen is visible, ma'am. Make yes, ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yes, it is. So easy, my yes, topic is okay. Okay, a descriptive study on the success of Startup India mission and opportunities available for startup in India. 
with the introduction of prime minister narendra modi ambitious startup india mission in 2016 it appeared that india would be on its way to becoming the next big startup nation the main purpose of this mission is to change india in a country of job creators rather than job seekers so here we are discussing data in the hub has handled more than 1 lakh 40000 queries till date more than 70000 who have registered as paid for another learning and development module aim of the module is to educate startup and visual entrepreneurs more than 2 lakh 30000 applicants have registered for the module out of which more than 10000 applicants have completed 100% of the course successfully here through chart we can see the success of start mission in form of number of job created by the startup mission so the key highlights of the past 5 years total 41000 startup recognized by the department of promotion of industry total 4 lakh 70000 jobs have been created 590 plus districts with at least one recognized startup 319 eligible startup have been granted exemption under income tax act 53000 orders received by startup with a value of over 2000 crore through government e marketplace now see the opportunities available for startup in india for future entrepreneurs there will be so many benefits providing to future entrepreneurs panels like patent benefit a panel of 400 facilitators for patent and 670 facilitator for trademark application has been formed various tax benefit under section 54 ee 54 gb will be introduced funds of fund startup scheme sidb has approved a budget of 10000 crore rupees and it will be disbursed till 2025 at establishment of incubators then research park the research park The Startup India project is establishing eight research parks in which 100 crore set up for the IIT Kharagpur, 90 crore for set up for Gandhi Nagar, and 375 crore for the other five research parks. Uchitar Avishkar Yojana is to encourage student to conduct industry and outcome oriented research project. Total 400 crore budget has been reserved for this aim. and department for promotion of industry and internal trade has established the startup india seed fund with a budget of 945 crore to assist the business so i want to conclude by saying it is safe to assume that the startup culture is booming and won't be going away anytime soon based on the amazing success of startup vision thank you ma'am thank you dipali ma'am thank you so much now uh, moving ahead i would like to call tulika ma'am for her presentation tulika ma'am are you there tulika ma'am tulika ma'am can you hear me yes ma'am i'm here yes uh, ma'am here i would just request you to share your conclusion because uh, as we are running short of time so uh, we would love to uh, listen to your conclusions only okay tulika ma'am over to you okay, yes ma'am i'll i'll do that thank you so much thank you ma'am please sharing my screen please let me know uh as soon as is visible uh, is it visible ma'am yes to likha ma'am it is visible yes, yes. so when good afternoon to all the dignitaries uh Esteemed speakers and my dear fellow speakers, I would like to thank our director, Reverend Sir, uh, for this seminar, uh, and especially uh, Alice Thomas, all the organizers, uh, uh, all the organizers, also Ravi Sir for providing the opportunity to present. Today, the topic of my presentation is the status of Indian Indian Indian. Tulika, ma'am, excuse me. Tulika, ma'am, you are not perfectly audible. Not, uh, yeah, perfectly audible, ma'am. Am I audible right now, ma'am? Little louder, please. Is it okay, ma'am? Okay, please continue. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. So, uh, the topic of my presentation is uh, this status of mental health in India, psycho spiritual perspective. So, the paper revolves around the reviews of the research, what has been done, and I have also tried to incorporate the positive psychology under the uh, psychological perspective. Uh, combination uh, along with it the combination of spiritual and the psychological constructs or the presence uh, which can really make and contribute for the betterment of the mental health. 
this is like uh, we are heading towards the target of the agenda that we have for 2030. Uh, uh, I'm heading towards the uh, target. To begin with the term mental health, where it evolved. With maximum effectiveness, satisfaction, cheerfulness, socially considerate behavior, and the ability of facing uh, and accepting the realities of uh, life. So, as Meghna Ma'am said, uh, I'll just quickly. Sunika uh, ma'am, you are not audible here. Sunika ma'am. Yes ma'am. Ah, your voice is not coming, ma'am. There is an issue with the voice. Yes, yes. Now, now it is coming. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Ma'am. It was kept on charging, so I didn't have that issue. So, uh, as you can see, the uh, status of mental health professionals in, uh, in India. So, this uh, uh, the data was uh, taken from Indian Journal of uh, Psychiatry in 2019. So, it the scarcity of the mental health professionals in India. So, it is quite alarming nowadays. Now, moving towards the uh, mental health conditions are increasing really worldwide due to the reason of demographic changes that has been a 13 percent rise in the mental health conditions and the substance use disorders within the last decade 2017. So with this, we can see the uh, uh, really alarming status of mental health professionals in India, in India. And also two days back on 24th of May, the World Schizophrenia Day was observed, uh, which is the disorder that destabilizes uh, the behavior emotions in which person finds difficulty to you know follow a natural thinking process and finds really difficult or uh, the patient distinct reality from the fantasy. <clears throat> so for which a proper caregiver with great compassionate mind only can give a patient the renewal of the life or reno uh, renovated uh, happiness, right? So because uh, without this, it can become really, really dangerous or it can become a greatest enemy of ours uh, as we are being evident of the war situation between uh, Ukraine and Russia nowadays about what Dr. Jackson uh, was also discussing, right? The time when uh, we have all the comforts, but in the absence of mental peace, then what is the use? So very rightly said by Gary Zukev that there is no difference between acute schizophrenia and a world, uh, world at a war. So for the, for the deterrence of these human acts, disturbance or instability in the minds in India, for the first time, uh, we are it is we are we all are ready to experience the big change which has already recently um, that the mental health is now is in the budget so that the, the initiative taken by the government of india is launching national tele mental health program under which 25 tele mental health centers will be launched as announced by the presence finance minister nirmala sitaramaiah now let us see who what who exactly you know defines about mental health so in 1962, it defines that the mental health as the balance, develop, balance development of the total personality, which enables one to interact creatively and harmonious, harmoniously with the society. I'll skip the uh, reviews of these uh, review uh, studies of the other researchers. The outcome that I have. Uh, so come and we would love to listen to your conclusion, ma'am. Yes. yes. I'm, just, I'm just quickly coming up to that one. Thank you. Uh, uh, according to the perspective of psychology, uh, psychology and positive psychology rather and the uh, spiritual uh, construct. So I have come up with uh, the uh, cognitive therapy model uses, which uses the ABC analysis uh, where one needs to identify, where one needs to identify the belief system of thoughts that operate between situation and its outcome. And the positive visualization is another technique where the individual visualizes positive outcomes for adverse situational challenges. Now, the third is the hope, which is full direct attention. The fourth is optimism. Uh, both positive, positively influence, uh, 
hope and optimism both positive influences are uh, mental uh, physical as well as our mental now the uh, fourth one being the uh, resilience which refers to the ability to deal with the uh, adverse or the crisis situations mindfulness it is again a very strong uh, uh, technique uh, which uh, can be defined as the moment to moment awareness and focusing on uh the concept here and now okay which is also linked with the uh, with the eastern philosophies in the form of meditation <coughs> it has been also influenced mainly by buddhism uh buddhist tra uh, tradition okay so mindfulness and meditation as it being studied in psychology also is it a, it is a part of positive psychology not just being in the um uh, spirituality or in the context of re uh, religion non judging uh, now uh, these have got uh, again a few techniques few more techniques or the aspects okay non judging patience beginner's mind trust non striving acceptance letting go i'll just quickly come to the uh, spiritual perspectives so uh, in the spiritual perspective we see happiness is commonly used uh, it, happiness is very commonly used word okay so it is a positive emotional state having implications for all aspects of our life it includes evaluation of life as a whole with regard to how does one perceive life in general now it has got two uh, approaches first one is hedonic ma'am ma sorry to disturb you again and again we just love to see your slide 9 9 slide ma'am please because we are already running short of time But sorry to disturb you again and again but <laughs> I understand now. Just uh, I'm just concluding with these two approaches now. One is the hedonic approach, and uh, the other one is the hedonic uh, hedonic approach. So uh, hedonic being the subjective well-being and hedonic being the uh, uh, psychological well-being approach. So yes, uh, just to conclude with uh, the uh, uh, next uh, uh, um, uh, aspect that is uh, gratitude and uh, forgiveness. so now to conclude with this uh, very famous saying mental health problems don't define who you are they are something uh, you experience you walk in the rain and you feel the rain but you are not the rain please remember you are not the rain thank you very much uh, this saying is uh, by matt hay hello thank you hello. so much excuse me yes magna ma'am may i intervene please yes yes uh, now because we are running out of time because we are we are uh, exceeding our time of uh, like we can say the validity function so just one more presentation dr suvarna's presentation after that we will be having proceeding towards our uh, validity session varna ma'am are you there okay yes ma'am uh, am i uh, am i audible now yes ma'am yes ma'am so i am sharing screen okay before sharing the screen is visible yes processing is going on ma'am is, is it visible yes ma'am yes okay. so my topic is green entrepreneurship a path towards a sustainable development a conceptual framework um first i am going to start from introduction uh, green entrepreneurship refers to special subset of entrepreneurship that aims at uh, creating a, and implementing solution to the environmental problem and to promote social changes so that the environment is not harmed and the objective of my study uh, this paper uh, this paper attempts to show the light on the conceptual issue associated with green entrepreneurship as well as a recent growing affection towards the green product by companies and discuss some challenges with the green marketing and offer suggestion to promote green entrepreneurship in india uh, this is my uh, literature review and the method uh, methodology for this paper i use uh, the, the secondary data uh, use and this is this uh, paper is descriptive in nature and data were collected through the newspaper magazine books journal survey government reports websites etc uh importance of uh, green entrepreneurship today uh, consumer are very conscious about the environment we all know that uh, and are becoming a socially respon uh, responsible 
therefore more companies are responsible to consume aspirations for environmentally less damaging or natural product so few importance i would like to share access to new market social responsibilities economic advantages competitive advantages more room for innovation sustainability and efficient use of resources some challenges need for uh, standardization new ideas patience and um, perseverance avoiding green myopia non cooperation and uh, uh, green marketing companies in india uh, here a uh, few names like lg here Uh, Tata Consult Consultancy Services, MRF, HCL, etc. And every entrepreneur must know the uh, four P of marketing, like a uh, green place, green promotion, green price, green product. And now I am coming to the conclusion. Uh, natural environment concern are gradually becoming a fundamental part of the business in every passing day. So the business units are adopting different business strategies due to this environmental con uh, consciousness. This is the reason behind the concept of green marketing and entrepreneurship, which is talk uh, taking place slowly but steadily in the market. And it is the perfect phase for those entrepreneurs who want to be part of this developing green market. and green marketing assumes even more important and relevance in developing countries in the world like india which should be a path breaker and a trend setter for all other to follow so thank you so much meena ma'am yes thank you so much suvarna ma'am for your precise presentation related to green marketing and now as a mark of our joy may i have the privilege of requesting our session chair dr ankita jain to share her experience her views and suggestions related to the research work presented here by our research and client scholars ma'am we love to listen to your uh, observations ankita ma'am yes ma'am so can you hear me ma'am yes ma'am yeah thank you so much first of all uh, st paul institute of management as well research foundation of india uh, dr ajay jain sir for this opportunity then uh, now i would without wasting up time i would like to proceed with uh, some of my suggestions as well as the summarization of this particular uh, presentations we have heard total uh, 20 participants till now that was so much good like i could see there were so many participants who has done some very extensive work and they have done it very you know very nicely uh, so if we say like uh, first we have heard uh, father john bosco he talked about self concept personality traits yamini ma'am and shreesh chhabra sir for the managing the waste amit kumar ji was the on the payment system e payment system during covid 19 priya gulani for the sustainable development role of technology she talked about stefer sir he talked about acceptance of the health gadgets which was a new topic and now we everybody is using all these gadgets and all hema bharadwaj for the future prospect of ai in the education specifically anand raj sir for the application of future scope of digital image processing that was again a different topic then swati singh for the uh, challenges opportunity innovation for the future abhinash yadav sir for the mental health issues they talk, he talked about yoga focused on yoga and chetna dubey ma'am for the uh, sustainable entrepreneurship and innovation then madhavi therani she talked about Uh, impact of technology and gadgets and services matthew mj sir he talked about role of lifestyle management that's very important nowadays for all of us for a healthy living gagan mittal sir for the role of healthcare services in india then dr jyoti for the impact and uh, impact of digital payment system he focused uh, sorry she focused on rbi framework as well as government actions and innovations has been done in this particular area goldie jaki uh, uh, she focused on e bike contribution to the environment and sustainability then rahat ahmed sir he focused on challenges in healthcare and well being he talked about physical economical social emotional and psychological well being also garima shivastam ma'am she focused on social intelligence which which is very much important nowadays and she also talked about academic stress dipali gupta ma'am she talked about the success of startups in india even now uh, presently uh, narendra uh, our prime minister narendra modi he uh, launched the 
you know, uh, this startup program, the Indore in the Indore, and Madhya Pradesh has become the first uh, state for the startups uh, as a hub for the startups. I must say. Then Tulika Mukherjee, she focused on the status of mental health, uh, psychological, spiritual perspective. She has focused, and she has also focused on different uh, programs run by government of India and WHO. Then Dr. Suvarna, she talked about green marketing and green entrepreneurship. So this was all about the summarization of all the presenters who have presented. Uh, some of the presentation presentations were so good as I have told you, but I would like to say the earlier presentation which we were having, I could see that there was uh, there was some lacking, like there was no objective. Why are you presenting? It was just like a class presentation, like the students used to give. There was nothing, find, no findings, new findings were not there. We could not see any good conclusion out of it because there was no primary data has been used. Even the secondary data that was not used. But some of the presenters, they have used some secondary data, primary data. Some of them have, have done some extensive research work. They, they have completed empirical research for the same. So I would request each of you who have not done it. So please uh, do follow the format for the study. Whether you are going for a conceptual paper or a review paper or any kind of empirical paper, there is no issues in it all. You can start with a basic paper. But the thing is that you should always follow a format. That the format includes introduction, literature, then objective should be there. There should be a research gap. Then you should also know your research methodology. Then your results, interpretation, findings, and proper conclusion, which is connected to your objective, which is showing your objectives to be accomplished. So I would request each of you to follow the format, nothing else. So once you are following the format, all your research, all your points which you are going to write down for your study or you want to inculcate whatever in the it should be in the proper format which will uh, give you a right direction or everybody can read out your paper easily they can focus what have you talked about you know they can focus what have you uh, you know come out with so basically the conclusion should be there objective should be there and the present the proper format should be followed by you that's it from my side thank you so much everyone thank you thank you ankita ma'am thank you so much for your valuable observations and suggestions. And Dr. Gunjan Shukla, ma'am, we are equally eager to hear your observations as well. Gunjan, ma'am? Gunjan, ma'am, are you there? Hello? Gunjan, ma'am? Can you hear me, ma'am? I think she is facing some network issues. Gunjan, ma'am, are you there? Am I audible to all? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. yes ma'am. I think Gunjan, ma'am, uh, some problem has her at, at her end. Uh, so, so uh, Meghna, ma'am, can we can we hand over uh, our session to the next uh, round, please? Yes, 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 yes. yes. I'm so thankful to the presenters and organizers for uh, making this session a meaningful and useful one. Now, moving ahead, I would like to uh, call or request Professor Tanisha, ma'am, for the valedictory session. Tanisha ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much, Meghna ma'am, for the smooth conduct of the session. And I would like to special extend my special thanks to Ankita ma'am and Gunja ma'am for sparing the valuable time for us. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thankfulness is beginning of gratitude. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. Thankfulness may consist merely of words. Gratitude is shown in acts. So to propose the formal vote of thanks, I invite Dr. Vinay Kaushik, sir, please. Thank you, Tanisha. It's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks for this one day virtual international conference on challenges, opportunities, and innovation for sustainable Organized by St. Paul Institute of Professional Studies in association with RFI and World Conference. First of all, I am very much thankful to God Almighty for his blessings. My heartfelt thanks to our visionary director of St. Paul Institute of Professional Studies, Reverend Father Simon Raj, distinguished principal of St. Paul Institute of Professional Studies, Dr. Sister Alice Thomas, for giving us this opportunity and a learning platform. A special thanks to all the guest speakers of this international conference, Mr. Vaughn, Eric Tendok from Canada, 
Dr. Noor Hani from Indonesia, Mr. Chekut Gupta from Bhutan, Mr. Chinha from, is from Nigeria, Dr. Somi Datta from India, Ms. Masuda Yasmin, MG Reliable Educational Trust from India for their gracious presence and their valuable sharing for all the participants. I wish to express my deep sense of gratitude to all the members of session chairs and panels, especially Dr. Ankita Jain, Assistant Professor Shri Vaishnav Institute of Management and Research, and also Dr. Gunjan Shukla, Associate Professor, Head of the Department, School of Management, Renaissance University in Bonn. Also, my sincere thanks to all moderators and technical support team members for their efforts and dedication. With this, I am highly thankful to Dr. Saurabh Kumar Chen, Chairman and CEO of RFI, Professor Dr. Ashok Gupta, CMG RFI, Dr. Ashok Jain, President, Central India Board, RFI, and all the associated dignitaries of Central Zone of RFI. With this, all the organizers, organizers, of, organizers of this conference. Now, a special thanks to convener, Dr. Ravi Vyas, and all the members of Research and General Committee of St. Paul Institute of Professional Studies for conducting such a wonderful conference. And deep sense of gratitude to all the participat participating members, faculty members, students for their participation to make this conference a successful one. So once again, thanks to all. I can do. Thank you so much, Vivek, sir, for your heartfelt vote of thanks. Once again, I congratulate SPIPS and the Research Foundation of India for the successful organization of this conference. Thank you. Over to you. Madam, uh, yes, sorry sir. to interrupt you. That time I was having some network issues, yes, so would not, uh, you know, was not able to respond as you were calling me. Dr. Meghna Ma'am was calling me. So that was a wonderful experience, listening everyone. Uh, the only issue was somewhere I feel that, you know, the theme we are having that uh, sustainable uh, opportunities and challenges with sustainable uh, future. So there are so many technical uh, papers were there. All presenters were very well. Uh, they presented it very well and they raised very good points, especially one of the presentation I would like to mention, which was presented by Dr. Shesh Chhabra and uh, Ms. Yamini Chijlani. So, you know, I just want to convey one thing that uh, we talk a lot about sustainable things and sustainable development issues. But then uh, at the end, uh, my only idea is whatever we are trying to convey through this uh, seminars and conference and presentations, we should bring all those changes in our behavior and in our lifestyles to save the future. I completely appreciate uh, St. Paul College for having, you know, for this initiative for organizing this conference. Equally, I'm thankful to RFI and all the participants. The presentations were very good, but at the same time, some technical points which were given by uh, Dr. Ankita should be uh, part of the presentation. And also, uh, we, we should try to inculcate all these things which we are presenting here in our habits so that we should, you know, actually target the sustainable development in our habits. So thank you so much for this uh, invitation, uh, for being part of this conference as a resource person. And I would like to congratulate the organizers and to all the participants. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your precious thoughts with us. Now I would like to hand over the proceedings of the conference to Dr. Ravi Vyas. Ravi, please. Thank you, Danisha, ma'am. Thank you, Meghna, ma'am, for uh, being uh, one of the person who is really collaborating for the technical session. And uh, you have handled the session very well, ma'am, because uh, I wanted to mention it here that only half of the way we, have, we could have gone because half of the presenters are still there, but we could not have the time to complete the same. So because the time doesn't allow us to go much more ahead from the from this point onwards. But anyways, I wanted to say a very big thank to the organizing team of RFI and SPIPS and all the collaborators, the experts, Dr. Gunjan and Dr. Ankita, 
for their uh, precious time they have deport they have given for this technical session and a special mention to ajay sir and his team there because without this help we could not be able to have such type of conferences in our college so thanks from my side from spips to everyone thank you so much thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir i think we can uh, wind up the meeting ajay sir yes sir yes sir okay, okay. thank you yes sir thank you so much yes, thank you thank you thank you